I think I'm live, but I don't actually know. Hello and welcome to the coding train. Oh, I do have my whistle. It's so nice to see you. Maybe you don't see me. Maybe I'm doing this hello thing and I'm just doing it to myself because I don't see anybody in the chat saying that they see me yet. I do see Open Broadcast Studio over here streaming. I do see myself in a confidence monitor. I feel confident today. I have a confidence monitor. I am new confident, Dan. Oh, you do see me. Yay. Um, oh, that's interesting. My stream deck ah, is not... Uh, hooked up properly. So, so I have this new tool. I have so many things to say. I don't even know. Maybe you've never watched this before. You have no idea where you are. I'm very excited. Very excitable. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's some like new notifications thing. I just got like a message. I was, ah, by the way, if you tag me now in Slack, a little message pops up on the screen that I have over here. That's kind of cool. Uh, I didn't do that on purpose. It just happens. But I have this like uh, Elgato stream deck, not a sponsor, but could be a sponsor. Um, and supposedly, when I press this button, it's going to, oh, it did work! <laughs> it choo-chooed in the, it choo-chooed in the chat. <laughs> By the way, this, a little bit more volume. Okay, okay, this I can probably do. Um, this I can probably handle, a little more volume. I'm a little bit afraid to turn it up because all signs point to being plenty. Yes, Marcos, it does work. Your message popped up here on the screen. Um, <clears throat> all right, a little more volume. I have it all the way up. Hmm. Oh, I know where I can turn it up. I have, by the way, I have all new equipment, new lights. I really want to show you something. This is what I'm the most proud of this. Hold on a second. This is very, I have to show you this. I have this, let's take a second. I don't have it set to like, there we go. Ooh, what is this? Why is this on there? Here we go. Look at this. I mean, come on, look at this green screen. Is that a beautiful green skin rod? There's a little bit of shadowing, but there's these new lights coming from all sides, very little shadowing. Uh, you know, I almost want to just do the whole live stream like this. That's just too wonderful. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn that back on, though. Uh, I think that's probably the best plan. All right, let's turn this back on, chroma keying myself out. Is my Slack in dark mode? I have no idea. Um, I don't think it is. I just installed it. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. This is, uh, I should have thought about what I was going to do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, no, now it does tell me. My stream deck has come online and it tells me how many people are watching. I, this is going to shock you. I have another button I can press. I'm a little bit afraid to press it. <clears throat> so this is what I really have not completed yet. The other side. First of all, I don't know why this is so dark. It looks kind of dark. I don't know what the quality is. Interesting thing is I have this camera on autofocus, <laughs> so I can walk up here and I can talk to you like this. This is me streaming to you, talking to you, saying, hello, welcome to the coding train. All of my facial imperfections, please enjoy the gray in the beard. I'm going to look even really close. Oh, oh my god, oh, I need to trip on this. Oh, I have a problem there. Oh, I, oh, okay, okay. All right, that was weird, but I'm coming back. I probably should set the focus to this whiteboard. I do have... Um, <clears throat> Let me, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, I, I, I have this. It's called Smarter Surfaces Magnetic Whiteboard Wallpaper. <clears throat> I need to put this on the wall. <clears throat> but it needs something called vinyl on over vinyl adhesive, <laughs> which I don't have. So I'll be going to some hardware store ordering something, and then I will get that. <laughs> And then I'll be putting that <clears throat> on the wall so that I can do some whiteboarding. I mean, I can move this out of the way and you can see the wall. I mean, I'm tempted to just start drawing on the wall because why not? But I'm going to put the whiteboard. It's magnetic too, so I can hang stuff up. But for today, I just have this rolling whiteboard and I can do things like draw. A little rainbow. Oh, this 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 marker is terrible. Um, I can draw a kitty cat. By the way, can I just plug something? I probably shouldn't do this. Oh, I shouldn't reveal. I shouldn't reveal. But I have an Instagram you should follow. It's not my Instagram. I have new cats. The cats have an Instagram. Right now, there are four kittens living in my house. 
Two of them are about to be adopted, so I will just have two. But if you want to follow them on Instagram, it's Mango and Goose. Those aren't their, those are the middle names, Mango and Goose. This is what people tuned in for, right? For me to talk about my cat, Catstagram. <sighs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Remember how there was this thing on the internet called the coding train and you would learn how to code and there was this friendly person who would come and teach you concepts and you would make creative projects and then it went away and it came back and then there was just like a totally insane person showing you how, about their new white walled enclosed room with no windows and very bright LEDs shining on me. Whew, I hope you can hear me still. I haven't even bothered to check the chat or anything. Uh, <laughs> I see now the chat says, seeing Dan's facial hair in 1080p definitely made my day. Guess what? If you thought that was good, I, 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 I'm sure I could get this up to 4K soon enough. Because <laughs> these cameras, the new cameras I have, uh, do 4K. I, am not, I don't believe I'm capturing 4K. I'm certainly not live streaming in 4K. Maybe try looking at the camera a little more. Yeah, needs to move. So here's the problem. Everybody's telling me to move the lights to the ceiling. I would like to say that I could do that. There's a real problem. This is me touching the ceiling. It's a very low ceiling. It's just like a couple feet above my head. Uh, there is no grid. It's this, this is not an ideal space. I might move all this equipment again because the lights should definitely be on the ceiling. Um, but uh, my sound is good when your face isn't close to the camera. That was weird. Um, I don't know what that means. Oh, by the way, I have this crazy like noise canceling thing on. So uh, people were telling me that maybe this is too much. Let's just do a little debugging of that for a second just so you, uh, the larger audience can help me with this. Oh yeah, you know it's really sad. It's really sad. I have something to announce. I don't have any, so let's see if my, the, I, let me see, hold on, maybe, maybe, just maybe, ah, 3%. I've been charging this tablet, which has my sound effects on it, for like the last 45 minutes, and it never came alive. And it finally just came alive and it's at 3%. So let me give it a couple more minutes and then we can have our music again. I was gonna do a drum roll. I don't know, actually, let's wait and see. Has it been 30 minutes yet? I don't think these cameras are gonna go to sleep. This is, I don't know that I've tested this. I really don't think they're gonna go to sleep. People are telling me to look at the camera more, so I always have looked directly at the camera. Right now I'm looking directly at the camera. I don't know if this is uh, effective, but actually what I do with this new setup, I have these confidence monitors, I find myself looking at those. But maybe if I'm looking at the confidence monitor, it doesn't really feel like I'm looking at you. Like if I would walk over here and say, and unfortunately, this is not on autofocus. So you just have to live with my blurry face. Hi. Hi. <laughs> you know, when you stream in a room by yourself, it causes you to do strange things that you would never ordinarily do in front of other people. Or maybe that's just me. Most people would not do the strange things. Uh, <clears throat> currently seven minutes. So your audio levels are consistently six to 10 decibels too low. All right, so the wonderful thing is that I have a full focus right four by four audio interface, which this lav mic is going into. I need to do another uh, sort of tour of this studio and explain all the equipment. It's a lot of this, it's the same principle, but uh, different stuff. So I am going to come over here and I'm gonna pump up the volume. I'm gonna need Christian Slater for this, but I think I can handle it. Okay, I just pumped up the volume a little bit. Uh, didn't do it scientifically. I just turned a dial. It doesn't even have any numbers to like tell me whether I'm at an eight or a nine or an 11, but I think uh, it's there. Um, when you're at your desk, it looks fine when you look at the confidence monitor. When at the whiteboard, it's a little more jarring somehow. That's interesting. Let's try that again. Tell me if the volume is better. Oh, it's gonna talk to you about the noise canceling I have going on. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, so what you're saying to me is when I'm over here and I'm looking at the confidence monitor, it, it's kind of jarring. But if I look at you at the camera, I look, look at you, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, looking directly into the camera. This feels more like we're friends, we're here, we're gonna code, all that sort of stuff. Yes, no? So you tell me. All right, so, um, 
What's going on today? So first of all, this I don't. This is not. I would say this is this is not the season premiere. I feel like I might need to go to a seasons model because my life is entirely built around academic semesters, and I was thinking of having like a fall season and a spring season and then a summer season and then a break. So I might. I'm thinking about doing something like that because um, even though my hiatus was much too long this summer, um, in in the end it was almost a full. It was possibly over two months. So I, I don't. Don't intend to have a hiatus that long from live streaming, but I do think uh, each summer, like taking a month break, is something that I'm interested in doing. <laughs> uh, so, and 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 um, so, I'm. That's not really the important thing right now. I'm just looking at the chat to tell me everything is perfect. No improvement is needed. The monitor can be louder. Yeah, um, people are talking about the whiteboard is reflective. Don't worry about that. I'm going to. I have a mat. The uh, wall covering that I'm going to, this is just a very temporary thing. The wall covering uh, will be, um, uh, matte, is matte, so hopefully it won't be too reflective. Um, I'm in, best at the sound delay. Oh, the sound delay is gone. So interestingly, what I, one thing I want to just show you, sound is absolutely good enough. Thank you, uh, Peter. What's nice about this too, when I get these pop-up messages from Slack, is it has a little face. So I see a little face. Hi. Thanks, Peter. Um, uh, all right, let's, um, let me go here. I just want to show you one other feature that I have here. Uh, David Cohen is asking, are you on Twitch? No. 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 I mean, I could be. It's a thing. I have the technological capability to do. But for whatever reason, I stream on YouTube. I'm a YouTube streaming person thing. I don't know. Not on Twitch at the moment. <clears throat> okay. So let me go to, this is the thing I want to show you. Audio, advanced audio properties. No, that's not what I want to show you. Uh, filters. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate something to you. At the moment, right, so this room, in addition to the ceiling being right there, <laughs> this room uh, has some very loud ventilation. Incidentally, if you're wondering what's behind me, right over here, is a bathroom. Anybody in there? If I have to go, which I often do, if I stream for like three or four hours, it won't be very far away, which is nice. On the other side, I think it's a sh shop. So there might be some loud noises. It's definitely not soundproof in here. And there's a very loud ventilation sound. It's not that bad, but it's a, if I were trying to record, you know, a, a, you know a, if this were like a Foley room or trying to record a podcast, it would be a problem. I think with a lav mic and live streaming, the, the, the buzz, the hum from the ventilation isn't a huge issue, but you don't hear it right now because I have OBS, uh, an open broadcast studio, I have noise suppression on. So I'm going to turn that off for a second. So now you should be hearing, um, I'm just sorry, I'm looking at the uh, chat. Now you should be hearing the sound of the hum. Now I was monitoring myself on a headphone, on a, on a headphone. This is a headphone, this is headphones. Now I can hear myself. It's a little bit weird because there's a slight lag. And I hear that hum. I'm going to click noise suppression. And it's gone. So I like this without the noise. But people, the other, I did a test live stream with a smaller non-public audience. And some of the people said to me, it's a little creepy how silent it is. So there is a suppression level variable that I can play with, but I couldn't really make it do anything. I'm going to do something with it right now. Um, so I am going to way better without the noise canceling. So that's your voice is much clearer. All right, this is going to be our first ever. And also, something's weird about the color, right? Doesn't the color of this background look different than what it used to be? Or am I just crazy because I have a different monitor over here? So many things. Let's do our little uh, straw poll exercise uh, for the first time. Straw poll. Let's try this one. Uh, noise suppression. Yes. It, I like it. I like the quiet. No, it's too quiet. All right, so this is going to be the poll. I'm going to hit create poll. And this is the URL. If somebody could oblige and 
place this URL in the, um, uh, if someone could place this URL uh, in the uh, chat. Thank you. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let you hear this again. So I'm going to talk throughout the whole thing, and then I'm also going to do it uh, and uh, do it. And, and Simon is pointing out to me there's also a noise gate option. That one I tried, and it causes a lot of like clicking and going in and out. So that one really didn't work very well. The colors are a bit off. The window is not white, right? Is that? But no, wait. It's weird. Is that my like setting? Oh, you know what it might be? Is there like a display color settings or something? Like I thought what it was was night, the thing that's called like, um, no, not this. Um, that like night vision thing on the uh, iOS. Uh, this is not iOS, on Mac OS, um, which is somewhere in. Oh, is it an energy saver? Where is that? Is there a setting where, um, whoa. Uh, so wait, hold on. I'm gonna let me do the sound thing first. There's like a setting, there must be like a colors setting thing, which I don't know why I'm like staring at this as if I'm gonna find it. Let me do the noise thing, okay? All right. Here comes the noise. The noise suppression is on. Noise suppression is on. The 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 noise suppression is off. 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 The noise suppression is on. The noise suppression is on. The noise suppression is on. These pretzels are making me Noise suppressed. <laughs> the noise, this noise suppression is making me thirsty. That would have been better. Uh, the noise suppression is on. The noise suppression is on. <laughs> the noise suppression is off. The noise suppression is off. You need the link. Somebody post the link. <laughs> Display night shift tab. Yeah. Oh, so I was in the right place. Yes, but night shift is off. So there must be some other kind of color. This is what I'm looking for. Display color. Ah, do you think this is the issue? On, definitely on is better. Oh, oh I'm gonna, whoops. Ah. All right, I. The syllables are clearer off. There's a middle ground to have the noise suppression. I agree, I don't know how to set it. I can't find the middle ground. I, I want to find the middle. I live in the middle. I'm all about the middle. <clears throat> um, all right, hold on. Let's try other color profiles. Could this possibly, whoops, uh, whoop. did that do something? There's nobody, there's really nobody who has admin privileges in the chat to post that link. There we go. Thank you, Kay Weekman. Um, uh, Nathan Growl is going to help me. Okay, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm following your instructions. I'm at your command. People tell me what color profile to use. Hi, Galix. That's so nice. I'm so glad to hear that you started programming from watching this channel. Um, no, no, I found the night show. Oh, people are, yeah. So I forget that you're in the past. I am in the future. You're in the past. Oh wait, let's see if I can get my sound effects going. Oh, I'm only at 6% after all of that time charging. Okay. It's true tone. So I'm supposed to select true tone? I don't know how computers work. I don't see an option called true tone. Calibrate? What do I do? No, I don't want built-in retina. I want this. Ah, pro capture. No wonder. Uh, true tone, what do I do? What do I do? So color OCD, color match. Does that do anything? Did that do something? Turn off true tone. Where? 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 Uh, 
And uh, there's, uh, where, where do I turn off True Tone? I don't know how to do that. Open profile. Uh, ah, that looks scary. Calibrate. All right, let me get my sound going. Somebody will tell me. Turn off True Tone. <laughs> now you guys all know how completely incompetent. I have a master's degree in interactive telecommunications. <clears throat> I can't even find the charger. The charger. Ah, here it is. I have a charger. I have a USB-C to lightning charger. Display, display tab, uncheck True Tone. Okay, thank you, Nitty H. Display, display, uncheck, display, display tab, display, display tab. I see no unchecking true tone. Oh, there it is. But this is for the retina display. That shouldn't affect the output to the capture. Oh, I guess it did it. Do Apple RGB, 1998. Is that better? Turn the computer off and then on again. Two tabs to the left. Yes. I can't tell if it changed. Did it change? I'm sorry for those of you who are here for the coding. Uh, we'll, there will be some coding today, but it's, um, it, has, it hasn't even been a half an hour yet. Ooh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, I do not. Do not. New message. Color is better now. Okay, great. What did it? The True Tone or the Adobe RGB? Who knows? Let's check the straw poll. Hmm. So more people are voting for the no noise suppression. I don't know how. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Pronounced nitty? That <laughs> didn't help me. Did I say it wrong? Nighty? Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. 1998 and True Tone off is too white. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is this like, uh, this like uh, live streaming settings by committee is a really bad idea. <laughs> but hold on. I'm, I'm over here trying to get some uh, music playing. So give me a minute here. 1998 seems more old fashioned. All right, I'm going to. I'm going to put that back. I, I do like the idea of being like an old-fashioned retro live streaming. Uh, let's go back to ooh, color sync utility. I did not need that. Okay. System preferences, uh, displays, um, true tone is off. Oh, I see. Automatically adapt display to make colors appear consistent in different ambient lighting conditions. Got it. So let's go back to, um, how's this? Regular Apple RGB or whatever it was on. It was like HD, how about this? HD 709A? Neo Niti. <laughs> Nailed it. Choo choo. Did that work? Yes. I love it when I can send something to the chat from here. It makes me so happy, but so sad. I have this Elgato Stream Deck, and I've only used four buttons so far. So eventually, I'll get to more. Come on, here we go. Uh, let's get to, not now. I don't need to verify. I don't want to verify anything. Just give me my music. OK, I don't hear it. Do you hear it? Whoa, super loud coming in. Super loud coming in. All right, everybody, um, now. Uh, what I used to use for this is something called loopback. Uh, whoops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a little, little behind the scenes magic here. Uh, there we go. A monitor to multi output device. Ooh, okay. But I don't need it. That's really loud. Sorry, everybody. Let me do it here. That's 
too loud. Sorry, everybody. Wait, are we at 30 minutes yet? is gone. I need to add the music to this shot. Why is it so dark? Am I crazy? Is this like really dark? Oh, the camera's like auto stuff. I need to put the camera on manual. Left is much louder. The skin tone is a little weird. Okay. Well, so one thing... Oh, uh, you know what? That's my fault. I actually have separate control. It's gonna be too loud, sorry everybody. <laughs> Request from Michael, Michelle, I'm gonna need some pronunciation help um, for this die. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I think you feel like I'm out of focus now, too. This, this dot, this dot, this dot. I think you this dot, this dot, I think you dot, this dot. Too loud, so. Is it better now? The weird thing is the mic is picking it up so much. So I just turned the mic off. This is the audio without getting it from the mic. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. Never forget the this dot. Somebody compose that song for me. So, um... Almost inaudible. Like... When you say it was almost inaudible, it's always almost inaudible now? I, or when I, when I mute my microphone, it's inaudible. This is really good for me to be debugging all this. Oh, the laptop mic is? Uh, the laptop mic. Oh, you mean, I don't, so there's no laptop mic. So, um, I, I don't understand what people are telling me. Um, the two sound inputs right now are this mic and the, um, the music is inaudible. Is the music inaudible right now? As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I think you this dot, this dot. Oh, it's very quiet now. Oh, I thought I made it too loud. Okay. This dot, this dot, this dot. Is this better? This dot, this dot. Is this good? This dot, never forget the this dot. This dot, this dot, this dot, this dot song. This dot. This dot, I made it this 30 dot, minutes. Never forget this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this dot, this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot. Now it's better. So the, 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 I have to remind everybody that it's very, very. I, you know, I'm just an idiot, and I should just listen to this because I can actually monitor it. As always, I always forget the this dot, this dot, this dot, this dot. Oh, I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this, this Sounds dot, terrible. this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do this dot, this dot. I'm gonna do dot, this dot, this dot. Hold on, this dot, this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot, this dot, this dot. Oh, oh this I'm dot, not this dot song. This dot, this dot, this dot. Never forget the this dot. 
stop, this stop, this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this, this stop, this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do stop, this stop, this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do this stop, this stop, this stop. I'm gonna do 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 this stop, this stop. This stop, this stop, this stop. This stop, this stop, this stop. Never forget this stop. Okay. It's like a hundred degrees in this room. For LED lights, they're not supposed to get hot. <clears throat> Where's my air conditioning? A wee too loud, but better than before. I have very fine control over this audio, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. I'm gonna hear it through here. Okay. And then, hold on, I have a weird sort of idea. Oh, the noise suppression is on, that's so strange. I'm turning the noise suppression off. is Coding Garden with uh, CJ here. Okay. Hi, Coding Garden with CJ. Or I mean, your name is CJ. I don't have to refer to you as Coding Garden with CJ. But it says on my screen, I love your icon, the little plant. Um, all right, I think I'm done with my good now. I think I'm, I mean, it's as good as it's gonna be. We gotta do, I gotta do something else. I got some color, got a computer. All right, so welcome everyone to the coding train. I am your host, Daniel Schiefman. And I am here <clears throat> to read to you from my book, A Million Random Digits with 100,000 Normal Deviates because what we need in this world, in these turbulent times, is a way of relaxing, a meditative experience, a way to connect with each other. And for me, very strangely, it happens to be reading random numbers. 71,318, 68,876, 53,986, 1,289, 58,934, seven, it was seven, it's a seven. 96,495, 27,537, 23,353, 41,525, 6,155, 15,146, 37,478. 98,966. It's much longer than I remember. 36,883. 26,967. 8,571. So, um, what this is, is a YouTube channel uh, where I, oh, I have to interrupt myself again. Oh, this is, I'm the worst. <laughs> because oddly enough, I have to switch to the other camera. For some reason, I have this, like, uh, I was doing some cleaning and various things, and I happen to have this perfectly green little towel, which I could use to, like, erase the whiteboard, but I don't want to get it dirty. So uh, I just really feel like I need to walk <laughs> into the other scene wearing it. Uh. <sighs> Um, also, what's going to be fun is <coughs> I will show you this very, very strange, mysterious can of paint. What is going on with this weird can of paint? You know what's going on. It has got green on it. 
That's the actual paint that I painted that whiteboard. Okay, so I was saying is this is a YouTube channel uh, where every week, and I think it's going to be Fridays for the foreseeable, foreseeable future, um, I think that I'm going to alternate between doing live streams that are in the morning my time, which would be about 9 a.m. my time, Eastern time. You can do your math as to where you are. Um, and um, 5 p.m. Eastern time. So today was a 5 p.m. Eastern time. Today I heard from a lot of you that like, oh, it's midnight my time, it's 1 a.m. my time. I'm going to stay up to watch, you know, get some sleep. <laughs> Take care of yourself. It's much your health and your, uh, your sleep and your, is much more important than coding and me and the YouTube and all that nonsense. But um, to the extent that I can alternate different times to help people at different parts of the world catch the live streams, I'm, I'm happy to do so. And it works well with my schedule because sometimes I have something in the morning, sometimes I have something in the evening. I do feel a little bit like fr Friday at 5 p.m. is not the best time for you to live stream. I have a very busy week. If you haven't watched before, I happen to have this uh, strange full-time job where I work at New York University. It's actually where I am right now. Um, I'm at the new uh, building in Brooklyn. Um, so in this building, on the floor where I am is a program called ITP, Interactive Telecommunications Program. I would pull up all these websites or slides, but uh, I don't have the time to do that. Um, there's also an undergraduate major called IMA, or Interactive Media Arts. Downstairs for me is the Inter Integrated Digital Media Program from the Tannen School of Engineering. Upstairs is the Clive Davis Center for Recorded Music. Remu, recorded music department. One floor up is the NYU Game Center. Oh, did you know? Let's see if they're live right now. This would be amazing if they were. I don't think they are. Uh, NYU Game, Game, ah, I can't type. Game Center Live, YouTube. Uh, here we go. This should get us. Where's the live streams? Oh, there we go. So they were live, looks like it was live stream yesterday. Come on, people. Oh, you can't see this. Watch the Game Center Live. We can help them out here. <coughs> Um, so, um, anyway, check out the NYU Game Center is here. I'm hoping to do more, uh, some stuff with them, maybe invite some guests, go upstairs. I don't know. I'd love to collaborate with them as well. Um, elsewhere in this building, I believe there's a computer science department. There's some engineering departments. There's something called CUSP, which is the Center for Urban Studies and Planning, I believe. Lots of stuff in this building. It's very exciting. I love being in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of convenience now. It took me a long time to get uh, back up and running with this equipment in this room. So hopefully I'm going to be here now for, you know, until the middle of December every single week. Um, I have some ideas and other things that I might try to do with the channel, little surprises hopefully planned, which I will speak to. But what I wanted to use today for beyond... Um, what I wanted to use today for beyond just kind of testing the equipment and getting back in the habit of doing this is to say, like, it's hard. Like, I didn't really feel like doing this again today. I, I mean, I, I hate to admit that because this is one of the things that I enjoy in my life the most. And the community that's around it and the people that I've met and the people who leave comments and watch the videos and, and, and create all these amazing things that I never imagined would be possible from these videos. But you get kind of out of the habit and I was like, I, I just want to go home. Like, I play with those kittens. I have kittens. I mean, I, there are four kittens living in my house right now. Um, it's a little bit nuts. Uh, and we need to, those other two kittens are being adopted. I think two is the right number. Did I mention on Instagram, you can follow some of Mango and Goose? <laughs> Fill up that Instagram, come on. That's, uh, that's, um, <clears throat> so, um, but I'm, now that I'm doing it, I feel really good and excited. Uh, I feel like there's a lot more work to do. I, I'm, I don't want to live stream with a lot of the, you know, there's a lot of nice inside jokes in terms of the imperfections and things that don't work and the camera shutting off, but I would like to have a bit more of a professional operation, it, it, mostly just to have higher quality uh, content. Um, so, there, so that's what's happening. Um, the channel is meant to be for a beginner. I have, if you've never watched before, which I don't know if it's so many of you, um, I have a, uh, thank you, Kay Weekman, for posting the Instagram link into the chat. It's awesome. Um, uh, I have, um, what am I trying to say? Um, sorry, I thought of the kittens again and I lost my train. <laughs> Whoa, that was loud, of thought. Does it say choo-choo? 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that's funny because when I press the button, you see the choo-choo, and then a little later I press the button. Whatever. Um, so what I want to, one of the things I want to use today for is to get organized. I have a lot of new stuff that I'm planning, stuff that's coming together, but it's taken longer to come together. So I actually, even though this whiteboard is a little bit janky for today, um, I'm going to use it to make a list of things that I want to accomplish this fall and through December in terms of content on this channel. <laughs> and then I really want to try to stick to that or use it as a kind of guide, a checklist, so to speak. And you guys can help keep me, um, you, all of you watching uh, can keep me honest um, in terms of what I'm getting to and not getting to. So I'm gonna, first I'm just going to brainstorm. Let me first figure out which marker works better. I could type this up. So I could make this a type list. But I feel like doing this on the whiteboard, and then we will write it down. Ah, look at that. This is a much better marker. I don't know why. What's the difference? I'm going to come up close to you and show you. As far as I can tell, there's no difference between these markers. They're the same, but this one works and this one doesn't. Um, OK. So things that I want to accomplish this fall. So there's like leftover stuff, I'm going to call it. Leftover. Uh, Tic-tac-toe, uh, Minimax. I remember this was left dangling. Can you see this at all? Yeah, you can kind of see that. It's not the greatest. Um, uh, the I got to do something more with the Rubik's Cube. I don't know what that's going to be. Definitely have to do something more. Um, let's talk about machine learning. So that's another topic. I want to do something called a latent space walk. Space walk. That's definitely something I want to do. Um, I probably will use a runway for that, a runway ML. That's something I definitely want to do. Uh, I want to spend some time on the ML5. This is not a thing that exists on the internet right now, but I have a version of this new. I tweeted this out. It's a little bit of I have apologies for the glare. Um, this is a, a new function in ML5 called Neural Network that allows you to train a model from, that, from scratch. You can, basically what it allows you to do is you, if you have a data set, if it's in a JSON format or a CSV format, you can load it in. ML5 will create a neural network architecture for you based on just some heuristics, making some best guesses, and then you can train a model and use it. So that's something I absolutely want to do. Um, there are probably um, like, um, so this, this is what's off the top of my head. So let me take a look at the chat right now and see if anything has come in. Um, by the way, I'm getting much better at solving the Rubik's Cube. I didn't, I should bring some in. Uh, this summer for my birthday, my uh, kids bought me, I mean, they didn't buy, you know, whatever. My family bought me a 9x9 nine nine Rubik's Cube, which I spent quite a bit of time. It took me about most of the day to solve it, but I could solve it now. That was a lot of fun. Um, okay. Uh, tree data structure. That's, um, um, Anti-glare P5JS, that would be good. Uh, let me come back over here for a second. So the other, th so where do you find, um, ah yes, so thank you. Simon brought something up, which I'm gonna put, so I'm gonna put that under JS topics. Like these are really just like programming topics. Um, so let's call that uh, generator function. This is something that I've been meaning to look at and maybe talk about at some point. Um, over here, I should write uh, challenges. So this would be like new challenges. Um, and again, this isn't like these are the things I'm going to do this semester, this fall, winter, and nothing's going to change. I just want to have a little bit of a plan and something to work with uh, so that I'm kind of keeping track of the larger picture and getting a sense of like what people are interested in. Um, tree for the Minimax, yes. So. Um, uh, um, okay, so let me see what else. Uh, don't forget n dimensions. <laughs> All right, so n dimensions. 
Okay. Um, yeah, people are asking for, oh, it doesn't change automatically. Um, people are at, uh, mentioning reinforcement learning. That, I, that I'm very interested in. I hesitate to write that down right now because it's a bit more of the purview of what I plan to do this spring. I mean, I'm like a year behind at this point in where I want it to be with that. So I, I, I kind of want to put that there, but I don't, I'm not super ready to commit to that right now. Um, okay. Um, WebGL and shaders, more OOP. Something that I would like to also have as a general topic, um, if I'm sort of thinking of topics, is like open source. So I think I could do more with um, Git and GitHub, but I probably need to detail that a bit better. Um, um, okay. Um, so a bit harder for me to use the Stream Deck, but I do enjoy it. Okay. So a couple things. One, let me, you know, most of you I think who are watching are familiar with the channel. I'm getting the sense, but there are probably people I've never watched before. So if you're looking for, to, to sort of learn about the coding train, um, you, you know, use two first stops. One could just be the channel homepage, but also um, the coding train website itself. Um, and this is where you'll find some of the categories of the kind of content that I make. So there's coding challenges, which are really just, you know, one-off videos. Ah, I want to do more computational geometry. Oh, so many things. You can see these here. So these are them. And, um, um, you know, you can see it's a wide variety of topics relating to algorithms and drawing and various things. Uh, wow, I really have made a lot of content. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. Uh, Hacktoberfest, thank you for mentioning that. So maybe um, we can do, I can plan to do something around uh, Hacktoberfest. Write that down over here. A functional and OOP stuff. So what am I missing from the sort of, yeah, so I, I think I need a more specific suggestion than that, but that is something. An automated switch for the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably should do that. I don't know. Um, okay, then uh, there are tutorials. Uh, I mean, do I need to, I, I might like to redo some of these beginner ones that are quite out of date, but I guess I'm going to hold off on that right now. Um, all right, so let's go look at, so another place where I kind of compile things that I'm interested in and that people suggest is this uh, GitHub, reposit GitHub repository called uh, Rainbow Topics. I really keep meaning to change the names of these repos to be like train themes, or like be like stations or stops or something like that. But when we were this other, when I was, when I, when we, when this was a different channel with another name back in the day, it was called Rainbow Topics. <laughs> and I just can't bring myself to change it. Um, so let's look at this. So one thing I'm going to do is sometimes when I'm interested in something, I like assign it to myself. So let me look at that first. Okay, auto encoders. Uh huh. Well, this I did. <laughs> ah, yes. Marching squares, marching cubes. Absolutely want to do that. Let's write that here. Marching squares, cubes. That's one. And the reason why I'm making this list, I have another sort of plan. Um, now, RDP, and this is a little bit uh, RDP algorithm is something I really want to do. Toothpick, I did toothpick. Oh, you, you know, I'm not really standing in the place where I, I'm kind of like off my, I guess I'm usually over here. And then I have more room here. I'm not really fully used to this layout yet. Fibonacci spiral, part four of neural evolution. What was that? Water ripples. I mean, I have to go through all these. Yeah, I think I did this. Ah, more rows is definitely happening. But I have a plan for that, so I, I don't. But I'll put that. I'll put that all on the board. Um, I did polar roses, but a more rose is a slightly different thing. Flocking challenge. I did. Oh wait, are these? No, they're the only open ones. Wow, we really got to go through these. K-means clustering. Yeah, I do want to do that. 
Trina, tic-tac-toe I did. Uh, no more, no more fluid simulation, please. Ulam spiral. Uh-oh, this is patron recommended. ASCII art generator. That's kind of like a fun one. I don't know how I would do that. Something around like ASCII art. Uh, let's do that. Uh, so David is telling me, um, oh, and David, could you, um, oh, Voronoi, yeah. Um, actually, um, JavaScript promises, okay, well, so many, so many things are coming in. Hold on, hold on, one at a time, one at a time, everybody. Um, Voronoi, I, I, I'm afraid of that, but it, it, it is something that goes on the list. Um, I think I need, can I just please right now just put Delaunay triangulation? And then if I can manage to do that, the next step, then, then you can tell me to do Voronoi. <laughs> I need to build up to it. Um, okay, so um, the other, okay, wait, hold on. Da David had said something. Procedurally generated textures. Yeah, what did I mean by that? I, so apparently uh, in, in a video I said that I wanted to generate, do procedurally generated textures. I think I'll need to like go back, dive back into that. Um, Tic-tac-toe AI, yes. A wire world, cellular automata, C++, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. All right. So um, now, let me look at uh, another. Um, so the course that I'm actually teaching where I need to make some videos to go along with it, um, github.com slash Schiffman. No, no, no. It's in the ML5 uh, organization under um, Intro to ML Arts IMA. Oh, how come I'm not signed in? I guess I won't worry about that right now. So I'm going to look at this syllabus because I want to make videos for all of these things. So I've made videos about image classification. I've made videos about transfer learning. I'm going to be making a video. It goes under the ML list, but I'm not ready to. It's happening for sure, but I'm not ready to announce it yet. But it has to do with transfer learning. <laughs> so I'll be coming to that. Uh, Pre-trained models, physical interaction. So. I think that I want to do, um, so another topic um, is image segmentation models um, in ML5. So that's, um, at the moment, that's uh, UNET. I guess I'm, oh. UNET. Um, and there's another one, body pics. So those are two, I mean, that I would even do today <laughs> if I have, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm here till 7, so another a little over an hour. But I have some other things that I think I might do today. But um, that's, that goes on that list there. Um, I've already got the ML5 neural network, data collection model training, data collection model training, convolutional neural networks. What the heck did I mean by that? Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to not... I don't know what I'm. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing with that. It's on the syllabus. I don't know what's happening with that. Uh, recurrent neural networks. I do want to do more with. So let me uh, go back here. So I want to do. Um, I want to do. Uh, I want to do interactive sketch RNN. I have a sketch RNN video, um, but I want to do interactive sketch RNN. And that is going to relate directly to doing RDP. So I need to do RDP to go along with that. Um, I'm going to move this open source thing somewhere else because the machine learning list is going to get long. Um, so um, open source, what did I have? Uh, right now we really just had to do something for Hacktoberfest. I wrote Git and GitHub, but I actually feel like I need I don't want to put general things on here. I do that too much. Like I want like specific video topics. So like generator function is a specific video topic. So Kay Weekman is suggesting explaining how filters and pooling layers work. Yeah, I would like to do a video on that. Um, I'm, I'm wading into the territory of where uh, ML5 kind of like hides and obscures those things, but I'm going to talk about it in my class at NYU, so I don't know. Let's, 
I'm going to table that. Um, okay. Data collection in a Python environment, trading, and oh, Magenta. Let's put that on the list. This is not my strength, but I'm going to try to do something with, um, did I make a video on sound classification? I did. But I'm going to do like a, maybe a melody generator, a RNN. So I want to do something with that. Um, run, more stuff with runway. I'm going to do like, yeah, I mean, this uh, uh, interactive image synthesis. So that's also a thing that I want to do. I did a few videos. Like I've done videos on this already, but I haven't really done the videos on this. So I'm going to do interactive image synthesis for sure, um, which is another basically image segmentation, but in the other direction. So I'm going to say uh, image. I, I know that segmentation, but like in the other direction. So interactive image synthesis. So and I should emphasize that for these topics, I'm really using higher level tools. So I'm using ML5 and I'm using Runway, which is why I'm not sure what to put about like CNN on here, convolutional neural network, because I don't think that what I'm going to do or have the time for or the, the ability to really this semester is um, like program a convolutional neural network from scratch. But I could use TensorFlow JS. I, you know what? We're putting that, I'm putting that on there. CNN. Because even if I don't do it in my course, at a minimum, I could talk about what a convolutional layer is and go through it and then make a convolutional neural network in uh, TensorFlow.js. That's a topic I feel confident in. So these are all my ML topics. These are some challenges that I want to do. Uh, what are ones that are like highly requested? Tetris? I'm thinking of game things that people are always asking me to do. So, oh, so this is what I'm going to do next. Um, uh, so Simon is asking, doesn't Melody Generator go under the challenge list? Probably. But I'm not worried, right now I'm not worrying about where the video is actually going to live. I'm just trying to organize the topics. <laughs> um, so yeah, I might make it a coding challenge like Melody Generator, but it's still, it's, so we'll, we'll see. Um, okay, so the other thing, the other way that I look for these topics is by uh, going to, I'm going to clear my filter that are assigned. I'm just going to look at the open issues. Atari Breakout. I've never done that. Oh, that's because I had a guest, Ying Shi, do Breakout. But, you know, people would enjoy seeing me do it. So that's a great one. We add that there. Oh, you know what's left over? Here's another left over. Neuro steering, I'll call it. So that live stream never got edited into a condensed video, which I think would have value for people, because right now the only way to look at my uh, explanation and demonstration of that is to watch like two or three hours, which you know maybe some people will actually want to do, but I would like to make a shorter video out of that. Um, and then, uh, this is what I like to do. Ah, neat, neat, yes, so neat. Memory game with numbers, that sounds like fun. Um, let me sort this by uh, most thumbs up. So this is another way that I sort this by most thumbs up. So we've got a bunch of these already. Storm Hydrology Simulator? Wait, when did this appear? I don't even remember seeing this. Oh, wait, I think I know this channel. Oh my goodness totally missed this. Totally missed this. In the last video we talked about... What? I totally missed this. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I totally want to do this. Okay. Uh, uh, da -da 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 -da. Hold on. I better log in so I can reply to this. Uh, uh, where's my phone? I need to two-factor this baby. I'm <laughs> getting tweets from people asking to post my cats to Twitter. Oh, yes, I'll post my cats to Twitter. Don't you worry. Uh, hold on, i got to get some code here. Authenticator. 
plugging my stickers. Um, uh, nine four six. This is probably is this insecure for me like doing this live? I don't think it matters. It's gonna regenerate itself. Okay. Um, I don't know how did I miss this. Oh here. By the way, frequently used. <laughs> this is, oh, that member joining Joe Paris gets a choo-choo. This, by the way, is basically just sums up everything. I, I think this, if people could just like screenshot this and share it, I feel like this like just summarizes my entire life right here. <laughs> and I will just use all of them. Oh, oh it didn't even. I forgot how to do it. That's so weird. I was like, oh, it's just like being slow. Whatever. There we go. Heart. Storm. <laughs> Be very, very careful about doing these emojis correctly. There we go. Yeah, this is good. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. Well, I've lost a lot of viewers. <laughs> good work, Schiffman. Ah, new member. Thank you. Thank you to Joe Paris for joining as a new member. I'll talk about the membership stuff in a minute. Um, okay. Going back. Uh, nope. Going. Oh, here. Okay. Uh, computer vision, fluid dynamics, 3D water physics, computer craft turtles. Oh, I want to do Voronoi, Electron. I totally will happily do that. So that goes under uh, JS topics or open source. Let's put it here. Electron. Um, Tetris. Uh, PyDay, GitHub Tiles, Incon. Carmen Vortex Street. Oh, that looks terrifying. Terr uh. Ooh, oh, dear. Ah, no, no more fluid stuff. Help. I <laughs> can't do that. Marching cubes. Uh, uh, I'm a little afraid. What's this? Uh. Oh, ooh, I like this. This is awesome. Uh, Collatz Conjecture, I like that. So I have, by the way, I have a whole new way I'm going to pick challenges that I've just thought of it, like kind of a sort of thinking about it today. So, um, and those are two, David writes, those are two things I saw in Rainbow Topics. I'm not sure what that's referring to. Ah, another new member, Candle Hitokiri? Hello! <laughs> um, all right, so I think this is, I'm just, I'm just doing this one page, hexagonal grid. Huh. What's this exactly? Yeah, I think this could actually be really good. And, um, oh, Red Blobs Games is like one of my favorite websites. And um, this is, looks like some very helpful information that I could probably follow. I'm looking for, there we go. Look at that. Yeah, let's do that. So that's also um, a coding challenge. So this is good because I've got, I'm at the bottom of the whiteboard here. There's another new member with a, a Cyrillic name, r Russian name, I believe, that I cannot pronounce. Um, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is a good, these are things I need to get to that I did before. I, I mean, I'm sure there are more things, but let me talk about now, um, 
Oh, Nightbot. Yes. I've, so many people have recommended Nightbot to me. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if that's like a thing. Let me, I, guess, I guess I can make another category here. I'm kind of out of room, but which is uh, stream improvements. Let's brainstorm some of these right now. So uh, Nightbot. What else? Mm. Oh, I want to do more with the um, Stream Deck. I, I, I guess I'll just put things here if they come up. All right. Um. Oh, Pac-Man and Whirly Noise. Yep. So I'm a little bit afraid to do Pac-Man, but I'll put it on the list. I'm very afraid to do Whirly Noise, but we shouldn't live in fear of these topics. There we go. All right. So I think I want to do some coding today. Um, so let me just talk about some kind of administrative stuff um, in terms of my plans. So I am revamping, not significantly, the membership slash patron program. Um, I haven't, I'm not fully decided about any of this stuff, and a huge thank you to Sai, who has come on board as a coding trained community manager, has been thinking through a lot of this stuff, communicating with those of you who have joined, helping you make sure you get your stuff <laughs> in the mail. If you have questions about um, being a patron or a member, or if you are one and you haven't received something that you were promised, please reach out directly to Sai. You can do that in the Slack channel through a direct message. If you don't have a Slack invite, <laughs> then you should reach out to info at thecodingtrain.com or Sai, that's C-Y at thecodingtrain.com. Um, David, um, I do want to showcase contributions, yes. David, do you think you could make me like a, a bit.ly link or something like that because that way I can just get to that document you made um, very quickly. Um, so Nathan, go to bed and don't worry um, that not all, the live streams won't all be at this time. This is just this week. I'm going to definitely do some earlier in the day. Um, okay, so um, one of the main things that I'm changing about being a patron or a member is I don't think that I'm going to mail people signed books anymore. I would love to be able to get people signed books. So I'm trying to think of a new gift. And I'm working with Standard. So um, if you're not familiar with uh, Standard, they are a company that does a lot of different services for different YouTube creators. Oh, you can't see me. I've been in the wrong screen for like the longest time. <sighs> um, there I am, over there. Um, camera bot is a must, yeah. OK. Uh, stream improvements. Camera bot. Um, so um, I'm hoping to launch a new merchandise store with Standard, helping me design some stuff, and then also have a special like gift that would go to uh, patrons and members only. And hopefully, I can't. I don't know. I the spirit of what I'm doing. I would like to send this gift out to everyone. So even if you joined like however many years ago, um, but that would most likely, anyway, I'm still figuring that out. But um, well, the thing that I'm changing is that I'm going to YouTube membership platform and people are joining through YouTube. There are two ways that you um, currently can um, support the coding train. One is through Patreon and one is through YouTube membership. YouTube membership doesn't have levels right now and Patreon does. Um, and so I think I'm going to add those levels to YouTube membership. And then there are certain things that YouTube membership allows me to do. For example, have YouTube member only live streams and you get little, I mean, emojis and uh, <laughs> um, because that's what people want. I don't know. <laughs> that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm conflicted. And I'm not choosing to shut down Patreon yet, but I might recommend uh, if you want the full suite of benefits. Um, to join through um, you, the YouTube memberships. Anyway, and I'm, I'm happy to answer questions about that or talk about that more at a later date. Um, so, um, <laughs> sarcasm as a service 
wrote, joined up just in time to get my signed book. I hope that doesn't mean you joined today because you're too late. Although, you know, I'll, I, the, here's the reason why I can't send the signed books. I'll tell you why. I can't figure out a way to do it uh, that doesn't cost more than $50 to ship a book internationally. It's also a tremendous amount of work and it get behind and people, they get late, they get lost in the mail. Um, so it just doesn't seem very sustainable. And I don't even know if it's a thing that people want that much. So I, if you have ideas or thoughts about the various types of things that people are interested in and benefits, I mean, mostly, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this because mostly I'm here just doing this YouTube live stream thing. It's nice to have this community of people who are part of the member program. It's sort of like it, there's many benefits to that beyond just like, uh, you know, some funding for the channel that allows me to do various things and hire people to work on projects and like sort of keep myself motivated, to be honest. Um, but uh, I, that's not my, my highest priority, but I do want to make it something that is sustainable and meaningful for people who are joining. But you're not going to miss anything by not joining. You will not miss anything. All of the content that I do uh, will always just be on the channel or th you know, on GitHub and that sort of thing. There's no uh, premium content. Um, okay, so, um, and some people are asking about the member-only live streams. So the member-only live streams are typically live streams where I'm testing out an idea or doing an offline recording session of something that I'm going to publish as a recorded video. So the only thing you might miss uh, if you don't catch a member-only live stream is a little bit of behind the scenes sort of chatter and push. Like really, if I'm trying to figure out, um, Nathan, I think I saw a message about helping me tune the audio settings. <laughs> like that I would do in a member-only live stream as much as you all might have enjoyed me for a half an hour trying to do uh, a whole lot of uh, audio testing. Okay, Discord server has been suggested. I, yeah, yeah. Where is that? Discord. I am very open to that. I feel like I'm out of my element here as like an old fogey. <laughs> Not that old of a fogey, but a fogey nonetheless. And I don't know, um, right now, the ways that the community communicates are Git and GitHub for all of the sort of code examples and suggesting topics. Sorry, GitHub is not Git and GitHub. GitHub is the website where I keep all the source code and there's the issues for topic suggestions. A, a better system for topic suggestions is definitely needed and wanted, but that's the system right now. Um, there's uh, YouTube, YouTube comments. I used to read, I, I, I still intend to read every single comment. I'm like two months behind. I kind of like popped in and out, but I just like l lost the ability to keep up with it. Um, but that's the place where there's community happening. YouTube comments aren't my favorite place in the world. You, the people that I hear from, seem to be wonderful people. I'm, I'm very lucky and uh, privileged to have uh, thoughtful comments. And I think, um, you know, there's, there's lots of reasons for that that um, are unfortunate, that not everybody is so lucky to be able to uh, not be harassed online. As, um, but um, so that's one place. So we've established GitHub, YouTube. Uh, you know, there's social media. Um, I'm not a huge I'm not super active on Twitter, but that's where you'll find me. The Instagram is run by Cy. We have a Facebook, need to do some more with that. So there's also that. The member community where is really a place to like ask coding questions, share cat pictures, and just kind of like enjoy each other's company has been a Slack channel. But you know, it's not sustainable for me to pay for Slack because it's around $5 per person. And if someone's joined for $5 a month, like, it doesn't even pay for itself. So um, um, some people have suggested Discord, and maybe there's, I think there's an unofficial Discord, there's a Reddit. So that's something I'm really open to, and maybe we can have some more discussion about that in what is currently the existing Slack channel. OK. Uh, I did spin up a whole Mastodon instance when I was on a Mastodon kick. It was about a year ago. But I let it, as many things happen on the internet, I just let it fall away, which is a little bit sad. OK. All right, could you please do a video? You have videos on map and reduce. How about a video on monoids and transducers? Yikes. Video on the wave function. All right, so here's the thing. What I would like, oh, 
thought of another coding challenge. I don't have room on the board anyway. I might even just do it today. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Oh, I got to do some coding before I go. So again, this is my practice. Get back into the swing of things. Um, I have some other, so I have some other things that I'm hoping to do. Some, a new kind of video that I'm going to try to do on the channel, but I don't want to say too much about it before I do it. <laughs> I, sh I shot a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a total mess. <laughs> so I'm going to reshoot that pilot and see how that goes. Uh, it's a video that I can do, a kind of video that I can do when I'm not here at NYU that I can actually do from home. So uh, that's, that's coming. Let's see if it's not going to be a live stream thing. Um, David Snyder asks, is there a way to pledge more than $5 a month with YouTube memberships? I thought I was mentioning this, and I, I think I lost my train <laughs> of thought and didn't get there. So, um, David, you, really, you can get my attention without doing a super chat, but thank you very much. Um, uh, so, yes, so YouTube memberships has multi-tiered levels. I just haven't put them in yet. So I'm working with Sai to do that, and uh, if in an ideal world, those would be up as of next week. Um, so, but that's, that's, that's the goal. I'm going to have equivalent levels on YouTube and Patreon, and I would just remove the Patreon, but whenever I say I'm going to do that, I hear from a bunch of people that says, please don't do that. I just like using Patreon as a platform. So I see no reason not to keep it open, but it's a platform that I'm less invested in um, paying attention to. I mean, there's a lot of downsides to doing everything on YouTube, so I, I have mixed feelings about that, but um, I think I'll get some benefits from the YouTube channel knowing who the members are, but who knows. Welcome to a new, I'm getting all these new members. Welcome to a new member, Bilal Shah. Hello, and thank you very much. Okay, I can't believe people are joining when I've done absolutely nothing but talk for what is now an hour and 20 minutes. Jeez Louise. <clears throat> I need a little break. I don't have any of my... By the way, I seeking. Seeking an animator with a special love for unicorns and rainbow-like aesthetics who might like to work on some interstitial animations that I can play during live streams, like about to start, on a break, and technical difficulties. Reach out, I guess, right now on Twitter. If, uh, send me a link to like your reel or portfolio or something. I'm looking to hire somebody to do that kind of work. Um, okay. Uh, hmm. That's not promising. I wanted to see if this example worked because I was thinking of using it. And I was thinking of trying to do, uh, since my ukulele is out of tune and the ukulele tuner I have doesn't have a battery. thinking, uh, why did that not work? Uh. One-handed typing here, let's see. Is there a pitch detection example here? Let's try the piano pitch detection. Let's close this. There we go. coding challenge I was thinking of doing today. Can anyone tell me if I'm getting anything remotely accurate that I could actually use? Yeah, I think I could do this. If it works, it works. All right, so that's one thing I could do before I go. The other thing is here. So I happen to listen to, I don't know if I should admit this. I mean, I, I actually don't mind admitting this. But I happen to listen to a podcast. You know, I, I had a wheel 
a spinning wheel quite a long time ago, right? You've seen me do this, right? Where I uh, will go and I'll, I go to this, like I think it's like shiftman.github.io slash randomizer, I think is where it lives. And I've done this and I'll take um, my list of coding challenge ideas like marching squares, uh, RDP, more rows, and like ASCII art, right? If I take that list and I put it here into this randomizer and I go to spin, I get this nice wheel, which I think I can grab and I can, uh, I thought I could spin it, or I could press this button, spin the wheel, and then it picks one randomly and uh, yeah, the ukulele is a little flat. Uh, um, and I uh, would then, oh, sorry, let me do that again. Sorry, I started looking at the chat. So I used to do this, and I would have a bunch of options, and then it would pick one, and I would then try to do that as the coding challenge. And um, it never really worked for me. Like, something felt off. I wasn't sure what to pick. I'd, like, put this away. And then I, I was been listening to this podcast where the podcast has um, a wheel. I, I, I've never seen it because I'm just listening to the podcast, but they spin a, I think there's a website, actually, where they have the wheel. I think it's called, it's called Rob and Akiva need a podcast if anyone wants to look it up. Maybe we can build them like some sort of software tool for their wheel if they, I think they already have one. But um, at the end of each podcast, they spin the wheel for the topic for the next one. And it occurred to me that that's the missing piece for me. And they have like a wheel, they have a wheel waiting room, they have rejected ideas. So I feel like what I did today was my little exercise of like things that could make it onto the wheel. Like this is a list of topics that if I spun the wheel and it landed on one, I could be willing to commit to doing it the following week. So in other words, instead of like having this list and being surprised by the topic, I would pick it in advance. I'm not saying that I would, I'm, and so I would do somewhere in between like going and programming the whole thing like all week and then just coming and coding it live and no preparation whatsoever. I think the no preparation whatsoever gets me into a little bit of trouble with some of these topics, like for example, Delaunay triangulation. No preparation whatsoever is totally fine for me for like ASCII art, probably for the Morrow rows, even potentially break out some of these, but some of these um, that require some research and thinking, so I would do a little bit of research and thinking and reading and prepare, uh, uh, not code, but I'd prepare the materials, and then I would come and do it as a coding challenge. So what I proposed, I was going to do this, I think I don't have time, I was actually going to do a coding challenge today, which was like program a wheel <laughs> spinner, and then we as a community could like make it, and I would have several different JSON files that would be the, um, and maybe I should do this actually, that would be like, the wheel topics, the wheel waiting room. And there could be certain things like, um, we could get really crazy with this where there's like one thing on the wheel is like actually a separate pick something random out. Like it could be, there could be like a games spot. So like maybe there's like a larger spot that's just games. And then when it lands on games, I would pick a you know ping pong ball out of a bucket that have, I don't know what the next uh, metaphor is or the next visual, like the, um, I would pick, you know, breakout Tetris or Pac-Man or whatever. So, and then, and I don't know that I would do a wheel spin every single week because some coding challenges would require a full live stream. Some coding challenges can be done in 15 to 20 minutes, ha, ha, ha. And then um, other weeks I really want to be going through my con and machine learning content for my course. So it's going to be hard to balance all of this, but that's kind of my plan right now. And... If I can get this other way that making videos off the ground, I might actually mostly do the coding challenges uh, through that mechanism, which is a way of, of doing, um, I have a little home studio that I'm sort of setting up. It's uh, currently, there's no electricity in it. <laughs> a little, uh, little teaser there for you. So I think live streaming will be kind of an issue, but you know, I can record a video with the extent that my uh, battery will last. That sounds very ominous, I know, but you'll see, you'll see, coming soon. Um, all right, so I don't know what people think about this is, uh, Dan, who is Cy? So Cy is spelled C-Y, and they are the community manager for the coding train, working on uh, social media, 
and, and uh, communication with the patrons and members and helping me set up this new merchandise store uh, and also special rewards for um, patrons. Okay. Um, all right. So, ah, thank you. Perfect timing. Uh, the list to the uh, contributions. Thank you, David. The timing couldn't be more impeccable. Bit.ly to N M four K Y Q. TMC writes, spinning wheel is lazy. I'm not sure I fully understand that. <laughs> I'm not sure if like, uh, you mean like I should do something more interesting than a wheel spin, but I don't know. I actually would love to have a big physical wheel. That's what I really want. But I, I'm not good at making physical things. Okay, will this work? Did I type this incorrectly? Awesome. So um, thank you, um, David Snyder, a uh, member, Coding Train member, who prepared this. So in the time that I've been away, people have been submitting contributions to the website. And by the way, uh, Coding Train Community Contributions. Uh, there, if you don't know what I'm talking about or how to do that, you can find this video, which is only 12 minutes long, which is shocking for me, um, which is, uh, describes uh, how to go through the process of submitting your contribution to the Coding Train website. Oh, I know what I'm going to use the wheel for right now. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, this is great. Okay, hold on. I've got a plan. 6.30. This is not a plan that can be accomplished in 30 minutes. But this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to do a coding challenge, which is make a spinning wheel. Yeah, 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 I know it could be like a bingo machine. <laughs> I'll get to that. Um, and then I'll spin the wheel to pick a number and show some uh, community contributions. And then I'll try to make a ukulele tuner. And yes, Alka suggest the, the point of the ukulele tuner would be to have a visual, a visual to show you that you know, this is the note I want it to be. This is how far off I am. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So how do I want to do this? <clears throat> I have this already as the thing. I could also just use random.org to pick a random number. See, I, the wheel spin is a little bit crazy because there's 78. So a, so a bingo machine would be better. The wheel needs to make a spinning wheel noise. Definitely. Definitely does. Um, how, to, how to approach this right now? I need to think. I'm not going to read them out. <laughs> I'm just going to think while I'm reading them to myself. Is it weird that I'm not reading them out loud? No, I'm not even thinking because I'm thinking about how it's weird that I'm not reading them out loud. I did the Plinko machine before, which kind of works for this. I like the idea of a bucket full of uh, part five for your Plinko challenge with numbers. Yeah. Simon, you and I think alike. Prize wheel on Amazon, fairly cheap. Bingo machines too, but they're more spendy. Money is no object for me if I could get myself a bingo machine. None whatsoever. I will spend all of my Patreon money on a bingo machine, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that is not, a, not even a question. <clears throat> you have to read them out loud. OK, good point. All right. What if I did one of those um, Price is Right things right now? Oh, welcome new member Luke Finch, where you like pull down the big thing. And it like spins around. I could do that probably in processing. 
kind of like losing, uh, see this is why I need a plan. I can't just come here and expect to come up with the idea in my mind. Spin the wheel, bingo, spin wheel, plink, plinko. Code of dice rolling, oh, that's an interesting idea. Dice rolling, that sounds like a very elaborate physics simulation though. <laughs> that's not within my realm of possibility right now. Can I, I'm just gonna do the ukulele tuner. Let's do the ukulele tuner. Uh, let's, uh, let's do the ukulele tuner. So by the way, all of you who are joining, actually a very curious question. When you join as a YouTube member, in theory you're supposed to be taken to a screen that has a little like welcome message with a link to a Google form. Did that happen? If not, please email cy at thecodingtrain.com. Um, okay. I don't think you have time to make something tonight. Um, I know I could do a spinning wheel. I feel like that's like a quick thing. It's like everybody always wonders how ARC works. It's a nice beginner friendly coding challenge. We're going to make a spinning wheel. And I, so what? I could put, I could divide it into 78 little slices, right? Or I could pick random numbers another way. It's, uh, sorry, K Weekman, it's actually, I believe it's thecodingtrain.com. I don't think I have coding train. Dot com. CodingTrain.com is listed for sale. <laughs> so I would totally spend a thousand dollars on a bingo machine, but I'm not spending it on a domain name. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Give me a break. Ah. <sighs> The, the, the is very important. It makes it sound important. I am the coding train. I am not coding train. I am the coding train. I wonder if people in the hallway can just hear me. Can you just hear me in the hallway? Probably. It's going to say choo-choo in the chat. You know that I'm going to do it. Okay. Um, all right. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Okay. One's for tens and one's for units. <laughs> uh, the wheel. Snowflake emoji. I'm trying to understand what that means. I'm definitely a snowflake. So you pre-chose the value, reverse, simulated the wheel. <laughs> uh, 70. Luke, your math is missing an important piece of, <laughs> of the, there's a certain percentage of that money that does not go to me, which is fine. Um, I'm listening from the hallway, John Walthall. Your name has a hall in it, so that's believable. But I'm going to need a little proof. I'm going to need you to knock on the door. If you're in the hallway, I'm going to need you to knock on the door. Okay. This sitting around trying to decide is no good. We're going to make a ukulele tuner and see how that goes. Um, no, no, <laughs> crap, <laughs> is it, let's look at my password manager, I can't remember, how come I'm not logged in anymore, oh wait, it was like trying to dash lay me in, right, oh, but I don't know what that is, okay, um, Uh, uh, da, 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 da. What am I looking for? Yes, my password manager. Really? All right, I guess I forgot my password. Uh, I can only assume this is the email I used. Did it send it? <laughs> See how unprepared I am? Now I'm gonna look up my email. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Okay, I got an email, reset my password. 
Um, okay, I'm going to make it. I, oh, I remember what I made it now. <laughs> because I didn't actually like do it with my password manager. Uh, just here. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there, but I'm logged in now. Okay. There we are. And this should be good enough. Okay. I am going to do a coding challenge. How's the focus? Am I out of focus? Is this okay? What, what do I have? Do I have the noise thing on? I'm going to turn that off because if this gets edited into a coding challenge, it's off. Okay. Then, um, then uh, we can always no run like a noise suppression thing after the fact. Okay. Um, I'm also going to need, I remember I, when I first, by the way, this is the second attempt at this, a long time ago, and it totally didn't work at all, but there was like a, a frequency to piano note, like wiki, Wikipedia page I think I looked at, um, piano key frequencies, which I'm going to need. Um, and there's like a formula for it, but I can also just look up the actual frequency here. So this is what I'm looking for. The ukulele would be which? The ukulele is um, ukulele uh, notes um, are, no, I want the, the notes for the strings. Um, is this going to give me a nice, uh, yeah. A, E, C, G, and this is going to probably be like A4, is that right? Someone's got to know this. Like where's that? 440, that's what I'm guessing. Uh, okay. All right. Focus is good. Okay, thanks everybody. By the way, just another little plug. Coding Garden with CJ has had a ton of content. I just get, I get notifications, notifications, notifications. Using something called like Feather.js. I've never even heard of that. Go check out the Coding Garden with CJ. <laughs> I've been not live streaming forever, and but there, there's so much happening on the internet. Okay. Oh, it's so sad. Oh. Just trying to think of what's a good opening for this coding challenge. <gasps> Hello, and welcome to a coding train coding challenge. This is my first coding challenge in this new coding train studio. Oh my goodness, but my ukulele is very out of tune. And I actually have a ukulele tuner, but um, the battery's dead. So I thought, here we are. Let's see if we can make <clears throat> a ukulele tuner um, in the browser using P5.js and ML5.js. And <clears throat> my voice just got lost. All right, so. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, editing is a wonderful thing. <coughs> to do this, I'm going to use ML5.js library, which is a machine learning library that I've used in tutorials and various other coding challenges. It's built on top of TensorFlow.js, and it is friendly. <laughs> it is, <sighs> I'm going to start the whole thing over. This is just like the old days. I get to do this as many times as I want. See, this is a paintbrush which was used to paint this wall behind me. <clears throat> Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge. Oh, that is terribly out of tune. This coding challenge is making a ukulele tuner. And it is the first coding challenge that I'm doing here in this new Coding Train Studio. I liked it better the first time. <laughs> Choo -choo. Twelfth root of two to the power of the number of half steps. Yes, yes. I can barely play guitar. All right, here we go. Last time. No more breaks, no more stops. This is ridiculous that I do this. I have to not do this anymore. This is my new year's, my new studio resolution is no second takes. Editing is fine, editing is fine. Just no second takes. Hi. <laughs> okay. Hello, oh, that was loud. Hello and welcome to a coding challenge from the, oh, the coding train. <laughs> It sounds better than the other room. I'm glad to hear that. <coughs> There's no echo in here. And I, I actually have carpeting that I'm planning to put down, which isn't put down yet, but once it is, it will be. Okay. <coughs> Hi, everyone. I'm back with a coding challenge. Oh, and my ukulele is very out of tune. I'm in a new studio. The tuning of the ukulele did not last in the move to the new studio. And uh, the battery in my ukulele tuner is dead. You don't need to know all this information. So I thought, what's a better opportunity than to do a coding challenge that I've been wanting to do for a while, which is make a ukulele tuner that would work in the browser. And so to do that, I am going to use uh, t uh, some JavaScript libraries that I use in a lot of different videos. One is ML5.js. ML5 is a machine learning library built on top of TensorFlow.js. Um, it has a lot of pre-trained models in it, one of which is a pitch detection model. I think I could use that to tune the ukulele. I hope. We'll see how well it works. And then I'm also going to use um, P5.js. And this is the P5.js web editor. I'm going to try programming the whole thing right here in the browser um, and see what happens. So what do I need to do? So I guess the first thing that I should do is import the ML5 library. So um, I'm going to go to uh, getting started. Oh, look at this. Actually, the easiest way for me to do this is just click on this link, which makes a P5 web editor sketch with the ML5.js library added. So I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go back over here. And I'm going to click over here and then over here. And I'm going to hit Save. I'm going to run it and make sure it's happening. There it is. So ML5 has now been loaded. We can see the version is 0.3.0. Isn't there a 0.3.1? I think there's a slightly newer release. Let's check that out. I mean, who knows? You're probably watching this when sometime in the future where we don't keep track of open source software by numbers anymore. This is release rainbow. <clears throat> mm. But yes, my suspicion was right. There's actually a uh, version 0.3.1. So let me go and uh, update that by uh, changing it here, adding the point 0.1. This is very important that this is in this coding challenge. You must learn to update your ML5 version when you are making a ukulele tuner. And then I'm going to, I don't need this console log anymore, although I guess I could try it one more time just to sort of see. There we go. And pause time out for a minute. Just because I'm kind of standing in front of stuff and I don't have it set up to, um, I'm planning to record everything with these separate green and separate background, but I'm not ready to do that just yet. So I'm just going to do a screen recording so I have that just in case at some point uh, Mathieu, if we edits this together, needs to take me out of this. Um, so I'm now recording the screen. Okay. Um. Thanks, Marcos. Um, all right, where was I? So 
So now that I have my P5 sketch here, I can go back to the ML5 website. I'm going to go to Reference. And here we can see one of the things about ML5 is all of the different functions that are in ML5 are separated by media category. There's this other category called Helpers. And boy, do I have some videos coming up about that for you someday soon. But I'm going to go to Sound, and I'm going to look at this pitch detection one. So here's the documentation. Hmm. Time out. <laughs> Hold on a second. What the? Just curious when I, there's a little, there's a mistake here I just realized, I think. Remember when I had the pitch detection one going? Oh, I have to upload the model? Oh, that's crazy. So that's a mistake. The model isn't hosted. Uh, all right, let's see here. I didn't realize this was going to be a little extra layer of complexity. I need to figure this out before I go any further. Um, here it is. Here it is. OK, great. So let me just. I don't know how big this is, so let me just download. Oh, you can't see. I'm really not standing in the right place. The camera, I need to do something about the where everything is. This should actually, I think I should be putting the sounds on the other side of me. But it's not really easy for me to do that right now. I'm going to leave that here. Um, I'm downloading this huge thing. This is ridiculous. It's at 38%, so I can unplug this right now. See, I'm just so out of practice here. There we go. This is what I wanted to do. The stream deck can be over here. Oh, you know what I could do? <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I could just move the desk over. I'm like, there's no room to the right of the computer for anything. Yeah? How about moving the desk? Dum dum. <laughs> okay. Hold on, everybody. Now I have my sound effects and my stream deck, and I'm standing over here, and I'm more to the side. I'm bigger than I used to be. People told me when I was doing a test that I was too small, but now I think I'm too big. Okay. 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 Did this download? Oh, sorry, everyone. I think I am back to uh, what I was doing.
<laughs> this is very confusing. The camera's like a little bit, there we go. Ah, I think this works for me now. I'm like, I just have to angle myself a little bit, okay. <laughs> uh, but is the desk now in the whiteboard camera shot? Good question. No, it is not. The whiteboard camera shot does not start until right about here, which if I go back is, you know, pretty far off. Okay. Should I just start the whole thing over? I should definitely start the whole thing over, right? Yes, right, exactly. That's what I think too. Oh, I'm so glad we agree on this. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I really would like to have a roaming camera in this room because then I could, uh, then I could, um, I could like show you the stuff in the room, but another time. Okay. I think it was better to have the, um, this up. <coughs> Non-FFT pitch finder revisit. Yeah, there's, there's many other ways to do pitch detection, but whatever, I'm gonna do it this way. <gasps> Hello, and welcome to a coding challenge. Oh, my ukulele is very out of tune. What luck, this happens to be the Make a ukulele tuner coding challenge. What a coincidence. Um, so I'm here in my new studio located, it's not my studio, but it is a studio. <laughs> it's in Brooklyn at New York University and I'm doing my first coding challenge from here. Um, I, I don't really know what makes sense. That I don't, this is like, if this is a moment to do some sort of particular coding challenge, I don't know. I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna tune the ukulele because the tuner I have, the battery's broken, my ear's not so good, so we'll see if this works. Um, I'm gonna use the ML5.js library. This is a, a JavaScript library that um, I'm lucky enough to participate in its development and I try to make tutorials with, so this works well. Um, it has a pre-trained model for pitch detection, which I'll talk about in a moment. And then I'm also going to use the P5 web editor. It'll be a little tricky to do this in the P5 web editor because it's gonna involve having to upload a bunch of stuff. But the good news is, I already have the ML5 library right here. Um, all you need to do if you want to, if you're in the P5 web editor at editor.p5js.org, um, if you go to the ML5 website under getting started, you'll see that um, all you need to do is either add this script tag or even better, um, you can see that here. Where is that? Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Um, sorry, I should have just started with this. All you need to do is click on this link which will open a web, a, a sketch in the P5 web editor with the ML5 library already imported. Okay, so we're there. Um, I could make sure this is working by saying something like, you know, console.log ml5.version. I'm going to hit uh, run and I see the version down here. So I've got ML5 going. Now, what do I need to do next? So if I go to the ML5 website, I'm gonna to go to reference, and in reference, I can see that the various functionality of ML5 is divided into different categories based on media, and what I definitely wanna do is look at sound here, because I wanna find a sound model. Um, and lo, below and behold, there is a model called pitch detection. Now, I should mention that there are ways of analyzing a sound for pitch that you don't need machine learning for. Um, you can do FFT analysis and look at the different various uh, amplitudes of different frequencies and pick the one that's left. There's a variety of ways and people much smarter who know much more about sound uh, could tell you how to do that and I'm sure you can find other tutorials. But I'm here, I wanna try to use the ML5 library. But this really begs the question like, well how is this working? You said something about pre-trained model. So ML5 is comes with a certain model known as crepe. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I like to say clip, <laughs> um, which is a convolutional representation for pitch estimation or clip. Um, I like uh, fruit, a little banana, maybe a little Nutella is kind of good. I don't know, sometimes it's too much for me than Nutella. 
This is about pitch detection, though. That's what this video is about. Um, and so you can read a lot more about this particular model and what data was used to train it, which is always a question you should ask when you're using someone's pre-trained model because there's a lot of things that can go wrong or right or be problematic, potentially, about a model based on the data it was trained. Um, and this paper describes that in more detail. Um, you can even run this demo in the browser. I'll do it right now. Um, let me, oh, not allowed. I don't know why it's not allowing my microphone. Oh, here we go. Let me, just, let me eh. yeah, I'm going to always allow. And I'm going to hit refresh. I'm going to click here to start the demo. La, I cannot sing. Oh, is this going to do anything? Boy, this, this is really a fail. All right, let's skip that. <laughs> I'll just match you. We'll do some editing magic here. Don't worry, I'm not starting over again. Um, you could click on this link over here to see a demo of it in the browser, um, but we're going to do this in ML5. And thank you, a big thank you to Hannah Davis, who actually did the porting of this model into ML5, and I'll include some links to her work in this video's description. Okay. So here I am on the ML5 documentation page, and it looks a little bit like, eh, what's going on here? So I need to create a pitch object. And there's some sort of like string dot slash model. What's that? Audio context, mic stream, model loaded. There's a lot of stuff I need to figure out here. Well, the first thing I want to figure out is sorry, I, I, I see I should now I'm looking over here and I see the chat and uh, real. Cygnus is asking, what's just asking, not criticizing? Didn't he use this a little while ago and it didn't go over well? Yes. And have I done, have I taken the time to check to see if it would go well this time? No. But here it goes. I think it's going to work because the bugs that I found last time got fixed. We'll see. Um, the first thing I want to tackle here is what this dot model is. So a lot of times when using ML5, it's going to load the model files from a URL. And you might actually put the URL into your code, or ML5 might just know the URL automatically. It's saved on a Google server or some other server, and ML5, it, it's saved on GitHub and like pointed to by ML5. In this case, this is a case where I actually need to have the model files with my code. This was probably going to change. Just by making this video, I realized we probably should host a version of the CRIP model that you could access um, through ML5 more easily. But um, luckily, um, if I go to the ML5 data and models GitHub repo, where I am right here, github.com slash ML5.js, I can navigate to models, pitch detection, crep, and these are all the model files. So this is very typical of any pre-trained machine learning model. There'll be a JSON file. This is essentially a, the, a file that describes the model. Oh, this is the neural network architecture. These are all the pieces of it. I could actually even click in this and start to like look at it. You can see it's the model topology, what it's using, various things like that. We uh, you know, investigate this more on your own. Um, and then there's all these other files, which are the actual weights, the numbers, the sort of secret sauce of the model after it's been trained. All of those little parameters of the neural network are all stored in all these files. Now, I've actually downloaded all of these um, already. And you can see them. They're right here in a folder on the desktop here. So what I want to do right now is add all of them to the P5 web editor. Let's see how that goes. Normally, I, I really only work with like uploading like little media files and sound files, but I, I think this is going to work. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a new, uh, it's hard for you to see this, but I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call this uh, crop clip. And then I'm going to do uh, add file. And I'm hoping that I could just select all of these and drag them here. Oh, whoa, I'm not plugged in anymore. Turn it again. <laughs> you can't upload files of this type. That is definitely a problem. <laughs> so how did that other, <gasps> oh, 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 I have a feeling that the way this was uploaded was like through a secret back door <laughs> to the web editor. 
Um, will that work? No, 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 no. I have a better idea. No. Nope. Better idea. Better idea. So the fact that they're here, sorry, here, means that I can turn this into a JS deliver, right? Because JS deliver and GitHub work together. No, this is not where I want to look. Don't you love how everything always goes wrong? Um, there's a way to turn any GitHub repo into a CDN uh, like this. So I should be able to do JS deliver GitHub ML5JS. Uh, um, repo. Uh, ML5 data and models. And then just the path. So if I do um, pitch detection crepe model.json, just see. Pitch detection crepe model.json. Yeah, for whatever reason, the lighting in here of uh, uh, share life is pointing out my gray hair. The old lighting used to really like obscure the gray of my hair. I don't know why, but it's looked much more visible in here. You know, it's, it's distinguished. Package size exceeded the configurate limit of 50 megabytes. Try, what? But the model.json file isn't 50 megabytes, is it? 16 kilobytes. These are tiny files. Doesn't make any sense. Oh, the whole, I forgot models. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Simon. Models, I think right here, right? Yeah! Boom! All right, now let's see. Just curious. I'm going to grab the example. I'm sure this is the <laughs> Once again, I could just do this like locally and then. I, oh, are you serious? <laughs> it says it loaded the model. I'm trouble believing it. No, no, it didn't load. We got an error. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, 403. What's an error 403? I mean... It's not going to work. It doesn't host it like this, does it? Huh. Did that actually work? <laughs> oh, wow. That works. <laughs> oh, great. So I could just use the URL to it. Oh, silly me. I'm going to back up here. Okay. 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 I think this is good. Boy, I have no viewers left. <laughs> Thank you for sticking with me in this. We're going to get there. Okay. Um, Uh, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? It's here. So if I go back to add file, I'm just going to do this again to like, because this is where I left off.
So I forgot that the web editor currently only supports certain file types, um, like JSON or CSV or a JPEG, image files, sound files. So these model files that include all the weights, they can't be uploaded to the web editor. That's something that might change in the future, but um, luckily, <laughs> I, can actually, uh, I can actually just point to the model files that are on GitHub itself. So um, this particular URL right here, um, where all of these model files are stored, um, there's actually a way to turn any file that's sitting on GitHub into a URL that you can load like a, from, from a content delivery network. Um, and so a way of doing it, this is a nice uh, blog post that I found on gomakethings.com that just shows this base URL. So I can always access files through this URL, cdn.jsdeliver.net slash gh for GitHub, and then the path to the username, the repo, and the path to the files. So I actually have done that right here. Um, I'm going to hit refresh, and you can see, look, this is that model.json file. And now I can actually look and see, oh, it's all of the configuration information about this particular model. And I can grab this, and I can put this into my code. Um, so let me close this. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to say const uh, model URL equals, and I'm going to paste that in there. So now, and then I actually want just the path because I want the model to load all the files. So I'm going to then remove model.json, and this is the path to the crep model. And I can go ahead and just delete this from here, this folder. It's gone. I guess I need to also delete the files one at a time. Let me do that. And now I am ready to start putting in some code. So I'm going to make a variable called pitch detector. Let's just call it pitch. I'm going to say pitch equals ML5 uh, pitch detection. Let me give myself some more space. Um, pitch detection. I'm going to go back to the reference page. And these are the things that I need to load. So let me copy paste. These are the parameters that I need to pass in. Oops. What did I miss here? Oh. I'm sitting here wondering why I have an error. And of course, if I declare a variable as a const, I can't just have it not equal anything and then assign it later. So this is going to have to be let. And I'm going to uh, make a lot of people angry right now by making everything let just to sort of like simplify things. Um, and now I have um, the, I've now created a pitch detection object. Now, what I want is to give it a bunch of uh, arguments to create itself, one of which <laughs> is the model itself. So this is no longer a local directory of files. I'm going to say model URL. Uh, I need to get this audio context and mic stream. Let me come back to that. But I also need a model loaded function so that I know that the model has been loaded. I can't type. There we go. All right, so audio context and mic stream. What are those things? Well, let's hope the documentation tells us. Audio context, the browser audio context to use. Hmm. Stream, media stream, the media stream to use. I'm a little bit lost, to be honest. Uh, can I get some more information? You know what I think we might do here is let's just look at the example. So the example here, if I look at the example code, is showing that, ah, perfect. So an audio context I could just get by saying get audio context. Perfect. So this happens to be something that's built into JavaScript. It's part of the web audio API, I would assume. And I'm, I'm sure somebody in the chat or, or, or someone will leave a comment to explain what this is a little bit more. <laughs> but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in here. I'm going to say audio context equals get audio context. And then for the mic stream, this is actually me connecting to the built-in microphone, or potentially I could specify a different microphone. And that I'm going to connect by using the P5 sound library. So I can make a variable called mic, 
And then I can say mic equals P5 uh, audio uh, in, I believe, is the function. So this is the function. This is part of p5sound.js, which incidentally is a library that I am accessing here in index.html. And look at this. I am on such an old version of P5. Let's update this stuff. I think the current version is 9.0. So I, while I'm here, I'm going to update that. Um, go back to here, and then uh, I think I can get this mic stream from the P5 mic object. <laughs> I'll just look it up here. Uh, mic.stream, perfect. So this P5 audio, oh, and I, I need to say mic.start. Um, start pitch. Why does, I don't see any function. Oh, ah, oh, interesting. Look at this. So I wasn't paying close attention. <laughs> I, didn't I didn't really think what I'm doing because it's, I've got to do two things here. I need to load them. I need to access the microphone, and I need to load the model. When I load the model, I want to connect it to the microphone, and maybe I need to think about the sequence going on here. Because as you know, if you've done programming or watched a coding train video before, things in JavaScript have an asynchronously. So maybe I don't need to do it this way. That's in the example, but I probably do. Let's try to do it not the way that's in the example and see if it works. It's probably going to break without being thoughtful about the order. So I'm just going to say mic.stream right now. Then I'm going to say mic.start, and I'm going to have a uh, a callback like listening, and then I'll write a function called uh, listening, and I'll say console.log listen. I'm going to take off this auto refresh because it's doing crazy stuff. Listening. Okay, here we go. So let me uncaught syntax error. Invalid or unexpected token line 20. What? I don't see any invalid token. Line 10. Listening. Cannot read property start of undefined. There we go. So this is an issue. Cannot read property start of undefined. Why is the mic undefined? Let's go back to the example. New. New. <laughs> I forgot to say new. So the new keyword is very important. When you are calling a constructor to create an object, you're required to say new. There's something really interesting that's going on here, which is that I need the new here, new P5 audio in, but how come I'm not saying new ML5 pitch detection? Oh, do you know why? It's because people like to do things in different ways. This is actually a little bit more standard from what I understand in the world of JavaScript. This is not actually calling an object constructor. The little clue to that is the lowercase p right there. This is calling a function that's part of the ML5 library. The function itself calls an object constructor, but you actually don't, and the, and the new happens in there. But our interface to it as the user of the library, we just call the pitch detection function. That's why I, sometimes I say these are the list of functions in P5 instead of like the, these are the list of objects or classes. But this is actually calling the P5 audio in constructor. All right, let's see if that fixed things. All right, listening, model loaded. That's promising. So it was happy. It seems to be happy with the order that I'm doing things in now. right? The order of the example is to make sure the mic is started and then load the model. But this doesn't seem so upset. Maybe it's going to work. Um, <clears throat> OK. And to, to pausing for a second uh, to think about what I'm doing next. So what's the next step? Well, what I want to do just from a, a, just to get this working is that the pitch is going to come in as a, a number, a frequency value. So I just want to draw that frequency value in the canvas. So how do I get it? Presumably, there's some callback. There's a callback model loaded, but I need to actually tell it to listen. So let's go back to the, I could look at the example, but let's look at the documentation. Pitch, get pitch, and here's a callback. So this is what I want to do. Uh, this is like the function that I call to ask for a pitch. And then when it hears something, it console logs it. So I should be able to do this in the model loaded function. I'm going to say pitch, get pitch, and then I'm going to write a function called got pitch. Because I'm trying to do this in a very long winded, highly descriptive way where I now have a separate function called got pitch. 
and then it receives an argument like frequency, and I'm going to actually draw that. Well, no, let's just console log it. Console log frequency. Okay. Let's run this. Model loaded. Um, I guess I need to make some noise. All right, here we go. <whistles> La pitch frequency. It is not working at all. This is a failure. <laughs> oh, I got an error. Could not, uh, could fail to execute. All right, this is not working because it failed to cr execute create media stream source on the audio context. Parameter one is not of type media stream. I have a feeling that this is the problem, right? I did things out of the order now is the, I'm assuming the order is the problem. So I need to make sure the microphone is ready before I start trying to load the model. So in this sense, let's try to re, uh, let's try to redo this order. So mic audio in, mic start listening. Once I am listening, then I will load the model. Then once the model is loaded, I will call get pitch, got pitch. If I look at the documentation, get pitch. Oh, 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 wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I forgot something else really important. I can never remember this. I don't know why. Um, ML5 functions, callbacks are all written with this style known as error first callbacks. So you must include two arguments. The first one is the error. This enforces you to think about error handling, which is the thing I don't really think a lot about. But at least ML5 is trying to get me to do it, and I should try to be a, I should be an error checking kind of person. So this should have error frequency, and I could do a little error handling, like I could say, if, if error, console.error, error, <laughs> otherwise, console.log the frequency. And I'm now actually realizing that there's a, a slight inconsistency in the way that the pitch detection model works in ML5. One of the things that is uh, all of the other features of ML5 do is they return an object. So maybe it gives you an object that has the value you're looking for, a confidence score. So probably the raw frequency shouldn't be in there. It should be an object. Maybe it actually already is, and I'm wrong about that. Let's try running this one more time. Oh, no. I like that. I'm seeing something. <whistles> La. Do we have an error? Hold on. All right, so what's going on here? Frequency is null, and it only did it once. Do I have to continue to call? Get the pitch, it doesn't do it continuously? I think that might be it. Let's look at the example. Yeah, it calls it again, calls it again. So this is promising in that something came out. Did the error come out? No, if it was an error that came out, it would have been red because console.error will print something to the console that's red. So frequency came out, but frequency came out as null. That's fine. It detected no frequency. I wasn't making a sound and it's not checking anymore. The reason why it's not checking anymore is it doesn't know to keep checking. I have to explicitly ask it to keep checking. So I say, give me the pitch. And then once it's got the pitch, it logs it, and then I say, give me that pitch again. So this is a little bit of like a way of kind of calling this recursively. I think this is kind of recursion, because it's not exactly, it's a loop, really. Um, so let me, let me run this. There we go. So when it detects a frequency, it console logs it. And let's see. <laughs> Higher frequency, lower frequency. <laughs> Higher frequency, excellent. So now I don't want to just see this in the console anymore. I want to create a variable. I'm going to call it uh, freak, and I'm going to I'm going to set it to uh, zero. 
just so it has some value to start with. And then here I'm going to say whenever I get a frequency, sorry, where was that? Got pitch. Oh, right here. I'm going to say if, I, I don't want to uh, assign it null, so I'm going to say if frequency, um, freak equals frequency. I might want to account for null in a better way. And then now in the draw function, which is quite unnecessary, but I'm going to do this anyway, I am going to now say, whoops, give me some space under here. I'm now going to say uh, text align uh, center, uh, text uh, frequency, I'm going to put uh, width divided by two, um, height divided by two, and let's say, uh, let's do text align center, uh, center, so it centers it in both horizontally and vertically. Uh, I'm going to say a fill 255 and text size uh, like 64. And then I'm going to say frequency 2 fixed 2. So I only want to see two decimal places. And now let's run this. Okay. Hey. <laughs> let's grab the ukulele. So the ukulele notes are A. E, C, G. Is that right? A, E, C, G. So this should be an A. So this should be 440 if I'm right. So there's, a, there's math that you can do this with, um, but I can also just look it up here. Uh, yeah, right there. Look at that. I even, it's even highlighted. I guess it's highlighted because it's like A4. Um, so this is the frequency I want. So let's just say I just want to tune. I'm going to just tune the A string. And then maybe I'll like do the rest, but kind of like speed up the video or something for you. So I'm going to tune the A string. Um, uh, people in the chat are pointing out that I could also just use a tone generator. That's probably a smart idea. Let me do that right now, um, <clears throat> just to see that it works. So uh, hold on a second. Let me find that URL. I wonder if it's not able to pick that up. Huh. 440. Yeah, it's about right. I mean, my, yeah. So I think it's, I know the mic is not picking up from the speaker. I wonder why that is. Hmm. It's getting it now. So why was it not getting it at 440? Sorry if this is driving everybody's ears nuts. Oh, you can't hear this that well. I'm not piping the audio out. Um, so let's go over here. It's pretty good. Not perfect. Um, all right. <clears throat> let me let me um, watch your ears. Everybody, lower your volume. I'm gonna send the pitch out through the multi-output device. So lower your lower your volume for a second. Here it comes. Is that manageable for you to listen to? I know you can hear it, but now I'm actually sending it out. Oh no, I'm not. Yeah, I am. I'm sending it out through the laptop audio itself. Is that bad or good? There we go. Perfect. Get rid of that ad. Was that bad? 
I see, I see one comment, oh God. <laughs> so, I could turn it way down. So I'm gonna turn it way down. Was it just fine before? Uh, so I'm turning this way down now, and I'm going to try it again. Oh, it barely registered at all. Should I just have done it with just picking it up from my mic? Is that better? It's 7.30. <laughs> it was fine before. So I'm overthinking this. So guess what, everybody? I'm not going to send it out. I'm just going to send it out through the speakers and let my mic get it. And you know what? We could always... was better with just the mic. Okay, great. So never mind. So now it should not, let me just make sure. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm gonna do it, uh, um, I'm gonna do it just with the mic, okay. Um, all right, so thank you to Alka in the chat who suggested this uh, online tone generator. I'll include a link to that also in the video's description. I'm just gonna play it. And as I do this slider, we can see the pitch is pretty much, the pitch detection is matching. I mean, I'm talking, which is messing it up, is matching the tone that it's generating. Now you'll notice it's not perfect, right? This is a machine learning model that's been trained on some data set of sounds, and then it's making a guess, a prediction of what it thinks it is. This is not a 100% uh, accurate analysis that you could probably do mathematically, especially with a pure tone, but this is an approximation that would hopefully work with a variety of different kinds of sounds that might be harder to analyze and pull out that uh, exact pitch. Also, I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to sound. I'm just trying to get this to work. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to make some kind of like visual indicator. So I think what would be useful here is for me to draw, um, a, maybe I should draw some type of rectangle that is big when I'm way off are smaller, or maybe it's when I'm above the pitch, I'm drawing it to the right. When I'm below, I'm drawing it to the left. Some type of, and I'm sure you hopefully will make a version of this, which is a much nicer, more uh, thoughtful interface. But to do this, I think all I would need to do is say, let um, difference equal, I want uh, the frequency, what that frequency is, minus 440. So right now I'm just tuning for A. I'm um, just tuning the A string. So then, I want to draw, um, let's do a rect mode, uh, actually let's not do rect mode center, let's draw a rectangle. Um, I'm going to make it uh, uh, white for right now. Um, I'm going to say its position is, what's the size of the canvas? Uh, 200, 200, 400, 400, so I'm going to say it's a 200 comma 50. Let's move the text way down. Um, and then so I'm going to move this like down here and then I'm going to make the width of it difference. I'm just going to multiply it by 10 just to scale it and have the height be 50. So let me just try this for a second. And let me play the tone. Oh, whoops. So this actually works. The nice thing is if I give it a negative width, it seems to uh, draw it as a negative, um, it draws the rectangle in the opposite direction. I don't actually have to flip it. So the question is, I think times 10 is actually quite a bit. <laughs> so let's actually not multiply it by anything. Let's think about what are these differences? Like if it's 500, that makes sense. So 60, 60 pixels is pretty reasonable. So let's get the ukulele now. Or actually, let's, let me still use the tone. So let me make it, um, let me set it to uh, A4. Let me play it. So I'm not seeing any rectangle. There's a little rectangle. There we go. 
me talking messes it up because it gets a different pitch of my voice. But I could also do something right now. I could be a little bit more thoughtful about this, and I could map. I could say uh, let amount equals map the difference between if it's between like 100, it's off by like 100 and 100 to a value between 0 and 1. And the reason why I'm doing this is I could use the function lerp color. So let me say I have the color red, which is 255, 0, and I have the color green, which is 0, 255, 0. And what I want to do is when it's all the way, I want to get the actual, I want to, I want to have the uh, actual color be lerp color. So lerp color gives me a linear interpolation between two colors like red and green. Oh, this is actually not what I want to do. <laughs> I want it to be green when it's in the center. So actually, I want to map the absolute value of the difference. <laughs> I want to map the absolute value of the difference, and this is much easier now, between 0 and 100. Um, and I want to then, when it's 0, it's perfectly green. When it's 100, it's red. Um, and I don't know if this is going to actually look right, and, um, but let's... Do, let's try it. So we can see here now, if I try to tune <coughs> the, the ukulele, make this an A4 again. That kind of works. <laughs> I don't know what else to do now. I'm thinking. 100 is way too small, says Simon. I should read the chat. It makes me want to cry. <coughs> All right, let's um, let's <coughs> let's um, let's make this a little bit fancier. All right. I need a bubble, shift the bubble to the center. Yeah, so this interface is terrible. <laughs> and there are definitely better ways I could do this. Um, a dial would actually make a lot more sense. Maybe I should use a dial. Like rotating a dial from left to right. A slider, shifting the bubble. Yeah. When exact green is zero width. Yeah, you don't even see it. Yeah, so, all right. So this interface, as many people are pointing out, is pretty terrible. I don't know what I was thinking. I, you know, much better interface would be like a dial. I encourage you to try to make that. Um, let me at least do like something that moves back and forth. So what I want to actually do is always draw this rectangle. For example, I don't want the size of the rectangle to have anything to do with the difference. So for example, I, c I can change this to like uh, rect mode uh, center, and then I can draw this rectangle like 200 pixels wide. So now there's always a rectangle there. Um, and then what would make more sense for me to do is to draw a circle um, that appears in the rectangle, like uh, 200, but at an x position. So let me just put one in the middle. Um, that's like 50, like a, a, a circle that's size 50. So that's sitting there in the middle. And now I can have this circle move back and forth. The x position can be like plus the difference. So for example, 
Um, so the difference, I guess, uh, divided by some amount for right now. Um, and again, I want to be much more thoughtful about how I'm doing this, but uh, I guess I'll use the um, I'll use the uh, tone generator. So this value 100 is way off. <laughs> Let's try making this like 400. Oh, what am I, what's going on here? Oh, it's too, hold on. Blech. I want to make it smaller? Yeah. Oh, we'll stop here. People are sending me images in the chat of, uh, of, of tuners. Yes, I've seen those. A dial with an arrow would be good. Uh, if you send me pictures in the chat, it's like I have everything, the font, everything built up so big, I can't see anything anymore. I can barely see the picture. So generally speaking, it's not super helpful. Um, the circle should change color when it's bang on. Uh, the lerp color is really weird. I agree. I thought the lerp color would be such a good idea. It's not at all. A log scale would be better. Um, I think there's a lot of better ideas. Mm. I'm trying to think of what's a simple... Uh, Um, yeah, let's not use lerp color. <laughs> I think the lerp color was an interesting idea. Um, and, you know, really just having like dials that like fill in or low, there's just so many nicer ways of doing this. <laughs> and, uh, people, people are sending me pictures of like tuners and how they work. Should them, uh, CJ is writing in the chat, should the max value in the map be related to the width of the rectangle? Yeah, that would make sense, right? Um, so if I, if the width of the rectangle is, um, but I'm dividing difference by 10. So a, like a way to do this a little bit more, uh, with a little bit more care would be to uh, take this, divide it by 10 there, uh, have this be the, like half the width of the rectangle, I think, which the width of the rectangle is 200, so make this 100, and then just have that also be the offset. So if I do that, but the lerp color is just really weird and doesn't make any sense. It's really like not a good interface, this lerp color thing at all. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just make a much simpler interface where I am going to have this circle move back and forth. I'm not actually going to change the color of the rectangle. I'm going to kind of do it the opposite way. I'm going to um, um, comment this out have the rectangle be white. I'm going to make the circle red, and then I'm going to say, if the difference is less than um, two, <laughs> oops, fill zero to 55, zero, and let's make it less than one. Let's try to really tune this thing. <laughs> And um, I'm going to also uh, draw it. Um, I'm going to scale the, the drawing by 10. OK. All right. So now, <laughs> I 
And let's draw a line. This is terrible. <laughs> I'm so bad at interfaces. I shouldn't be allowed to do any of this. I'm going to draw a line at uh, 200, um, sorry, at uh, 0, sorry, no, 200 comma 0 to 200 comma uh, 200. Uh, and let's, uh, let's draw that line here um, and say, uh, let's have the rectangle be, uh, have some alpha to it. Say stroke 100 and stroke weight uh, 4, and then um, we'll get rid of the stroke here and all right. So now, <laughs> why is it green? Oh, because it hasn't gotten a frequency yet. <laughs> I got to give it a frequency. I'm tuning it, I'm getting, tuning it, getting closer. Oh, no, 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 It can't be less, it's gotta be the absolute value. Gotta be the absolute value. And we're gonna map, I got a great idea now. Now we're going to map. So we can do things like this now. I need logarithmic scale. Why is it? Why is the alpha of this rectangle not changing? It's yeah. yeah. If the difference is 100, the alpha is 0. Am I losing my mind? Why? Oh, no. I didn't rerun the sketch? Oh. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Um. I have an idea. I have the cr a crazy idea. <laughs> I gotta stop doing this. <clears throat> okay. So. Oh. Why is there? Oh, because that's. I keep thinking that I'm hitting this button is rerunning the sketch. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So right now. And this should really be, I feel like this shouldn't be an ellipse. <laughs> it should be a rectangle. I should really turn on the auto refresh now, because that'll. It should be a rectangle that is, um, uh, that is at this location, and then it is like five pixels wide and fi f 50 pixels high. And it should be. 10 pixels wide and 75 pixels high. <laughs> and this should be stroke weight one. There we go. Okay, <laughs> here's my interface. I worked very hard on this. I am now going to play a tone. And I'm going to try to tune it. And then when you get there, and I'm going to let myself be within three frequency values. I'm going to say uh, also this. Oh, auto refresh was a terrible idea. Fill 0 to 55, 0. OK, ready? Let's tune this ukulele.
Five is way too much. Let's uh, have the threshold be one. There's my ukulele tuner. You can see that is not the right note. So, so many things need to be thought. First of all, that does not sound right. This is going to be a much better way of tuning it. <laughs> oh, it's actually not so bad. Better than I thought. All right. Now, really quickly, what I want to do is actually allow myself in this one sketch to tune all four of the strings. And I really should be stop this video right now and not go any further, but I would like to do this. There's so much that needs to be And you will do that. You will also make a version of this with a, a, an interface that looks like an actual thoughtful tuner. Is this playing the whole song? Oh no, it's just like a... Is <laughs> so let's, um, let's make an array of the notes. So I'm going to make an array. So I'm going to say notes equals, and I'm going to create a bunch of objects. Four objects. And each object is going to have uh, the note and the frequency. And the note, for example, is A, and the frequency is 440. So I don't know why I did all that work when I just want to do this. So there are four strings on the ukulele. There's A, E, C and G. So let's look up those frequencies. Um, the E is E, it should be uh, E4, which is this, 329.623. C is, I think it is going to be, is it middle C? I'm pretty sure it is. 261.6256. And then the G is actually um, G4, I believe. I don't know if I'm 100% right about this. So now, the thing that I want to do is I want to find out what am I tuning against. So first of all, this is, this is horrific. I cannot bear this code that I have written. So let's at least make this a little bit better. Um, Um, let's make a variable called uh, threshold. And again, I should do like a mapping or whatever. Um, but let's make that threshold one. And I will at least put that there so we know. And again, it's ridiculous that I have these if statement in two places, but that'll be fine. But the first thing that I need to do is actually figure out which note am I trying to compare it to. And I want to automatically do that. So. I don't know actually which string I'm playing unless I did some kind of like crazy computer vision thing, but I'm just going to like find the note that it's closest to and tune against that. So what I want to do here is I'm going to loop through uh, all of the notes and I'm going to find the closest note uh, is an index like zero. And so, uh, and then I'm just going to say negative one right now. And then the record, uh, the record uh, difference is I'm going to start with infinity. And then I'm going to say uh, the um, it, I'm going to say the difference is uh, notes index i dot frequency 
the actual frequency minus that. If, and I'm sure I could use reduce or some kind of fancy higher order array function, but let me just do it this way. If the difference is less than the record difference, then the closest note is i. And then uh, once I've done that, I have the closest note. So now, um, and let me just keep that difference. Oh, I have it in record dis difference. So difference equals record difference. And it's not less than, it's absolute value. Sorry, got to have that absolute value in there. Always got to have that absolute value in there. Um, and then the, um, the actual note itself, can I use this variable name, is the notes index closest note. I mean, I could have just, I don't have to save the index. I could have saved the object. But yeah, let me save the object, notes index i, notes index i. I don't need to save the index. Um, and that's closest note. And then what I'm doing is I'm showing the value, and then I want to draw. Um, instead of uh, where, I'm draw where I'm drawing this value right here, I actually want to just put the note on the screen as well, uh, which would be where do I do that? Where do I dr set for actually draw that difference? Oh, the text is up here. So I'm going to make this um, much smaller, and then I'm also going to... Uh, right here, um, say I'm going to say uh, text size 64. I'm going to say closest note dot note, and this I'm going to place like 150 pixels up, and this 50 pixels up. Let's see what that does. Great. So now I should be able to tune all of the strings. So it should detect here. Is it not giving me any information? We're going to have to debug this. First of all, okay. Um, let me look at this. So let me console log. Oh. Let me just make this null. Console log. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Oh, I'm missing like a super obvious thing. I forgot to set the record difference uh, equal to that difference. Well, duh. OK, here we go. So my A is pretty tuned. Console log record difference and closest note. absolute value here and then I won't make this mistake if the difference right I need this this has to be the absolute value as well <laughs> that's a definitely a problem all right here we go everybody I think this is good now that's a oh, I really need some finer grain uh,
I need the negative difference. Oh, I need it here. <laughs> okay, everybody. Everything's going to be fine. So, um, when I'm getting the record, I want the smallest one. But then when I use it down here, you know, if it's negative or not, is kind of important, right? No, I'm using the absolute value everywhere. Oh, except for drawing where it is. <sighs> All right. How about this? How about that? Huh? How about that? If the absolute value of the difference is less than the absolute value of the record difference, then the record difference is the difference. But I save the negative for use down here. would like to be able to see more movement. So where's this divide by 10? Give me a break. Divide yourself by two, people. Whoops, wrong string. What did I do wrong? Did my G is wrong? This is the wrong G? things I could do to improve this. I could use lerp. Using lerp never hurts. No sound for, oh, there's no sound from the soundboard. Oh, you weren't hearing that? Oh, because I turned it all the way down. Well. All right. Is this good? Can I be done?
Save sketch. Okay. So. This has been my first coding challenge in the new Coding Train uh, studio over here at New York University in Brooklyn. I made a ukulele tuner and it has the worst ever interface for a ukulele tuner. But I do think there are some nuggets in here. It's nice to see how that pitch detection model works. I would love it if you made your own version of this. You could go to thecodingtrain.com. Uh, find the page for this coding challenge, look at the instructions to submit your own. I actually have a video tutorial for how to do that. If you make your own ukulele tuner and you put it on the web, I will tune this ukulele with it in my next um, live stream. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in a future coding challenge. Goodbye. Um, I don't like the tiny needle mo moment movement personally. I don't like it at all either. It's awful. Um, we'll see if Mathieu can work some kind of magic to edit this. Let me check my phone. I've been doing this for three hours, apparently. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Just texting my family who's wondering what the hell I am. I said, oh, I'll be done by seven. <laughs> um, so, uh, thanks everybody. Re somebody help me remember this list. There's 371 of you watching, which is about 300 less than started. Oh, that's weird. That's very weird. Uh, this camera, did this camera go to sleep? Or did a cable go loose? Weird. Ah, I wonder if that camera went to sleep. This camera, yeah, it's weird. I'm looking at the confidence monitor, which is not looking at the camera. This is me looking at the camera. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I am really, uh, I'm the wrong height. I stand back here. Thank you so much for watching this live stream. Um, I didn't get to show any of the community contributions. I really think I have to end now, though. I'll be back next Friday. <laughs> At a minimum, I'll be back next Friday. I have this whole list of things. Um, if anyone wants to help work on the wheel, um, let's start a new repo. In I mean, I have that like wheel spinning thing, but I want to start over, and I want to make a wheel spin. I should do the wheel spin right now, right? What, what am I going to do next week? I should do the wheel spin right I mean, I should do what I said I was going to do, right? If I'm going to do one of these next week, ah. If I'm going to do one of these next week, I should do one of these next week. I should do what I say I'm going to do. Um, I scaled it. Is, is this a quick fix? instead of what would be the next previous string. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Is that a like thing that I could, uh, uh, my brain is totally dead. So marching squares, RDP, more, I'm not going to put more rows on there because I'm, well, actually, I'll put it on there. If it lands on it, then good. <laughs> I'm planning it. ASCII art. Uh, Delaunay. I don't think I spelled that right. Uh, Tetris. Oh, my God. Please, no. <laughs> Breakout. Collats. Conjecture. Oh, please hexagonal grid. I would love to do that next week. That sounds like such a good idea. Pac-Man, no. Whirly noise, no. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay, everyone. <laughs> uh...
I am going to spin this wheel. And whatever it comes up on <laughs> is what I have to do in my live stream next week. <laughs> Just, I'm going to take one mulligan. I, I, so first of all, I think I should, I'm not going to use it right now, but I think I should get like a veto. So like one time between now and the end of 2019, if it lands on something and I want to veto it, I could spin again. <laughs> I could come up with some other goofy rules. Let's just spin it. Next week on the Cody Train, <gasps> whatever this is, <laughs> I'll see you next week where I will be doing the Colots Conjecture. I will read up on what that is. I will look at the issue. Thank you to whoever submitted that. I'm sorry. David, thank you so much for preparing that list. I, um, I would love it if people, um, let me just at least, let me show one community contribution because he spent so much time. Uh, working on that, and I've already like lost it. Contributions, random.org. This should allow me to pick a random number, right? Numbers, uh, integer generator. I want to get a number between um, 2 and uh, 78 inclusive. One random number between 2 and 78, both inclusive, and get the number. Here we go. I know you can't see this. 41. OK, so today, before I go, I'm going to look at one. Uh, oh, and Cybers is telling me to watch the number file. Awesome. OK, I'll watch that. Uh, one community contribution on the spreadsheet number 41. Let's see whose it is. It is by, oh, it is sentiment analysis by Lee I.M.A. Papa. <laughs> it's a link on CodePen. Uh, what was it, 41? Why, well, Lee I.M.A. Papa submitted a bunch of things. But we're going to look at this one, and we're going to check it out. Oh, look at this. <gasps> oh, it's doing some kind of like sentiment analysis. Do I press this button? What does it do? Is that the, uh, is this the analysis I'm getting? <laughs> Veto, please. Uh, typing happy, 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 joy, joy. Oh, and I got a three. Oh, okay. So it's, this is sentiment analysis with the bag of words technique where it's looking at words that it knows are associated with a positive or negative sentiment, probably adding up the score together. And I love that we see the score here. I love this little animation of like now calculate it and then that the result is given with an emoji, which is really awesome. Excellent work. Thank you for this community contribution. I hope to look at more of these in future live streams. And I will now take you out with my goodbye song. Um, and I'll be back. I'm going to do more next week than just that. That's just the coding challenge. Hopefully next week I'm going to come and maybe do something else from one of these other topics. Or um, And I probably should have put the leftover stuff. The tic-tac-toe minimax should have definitely been on that list. So we got to build ourselves a better wheel, um, one that has like a wheel waiting room, perhaps even of like topics and like the sort of core topics. I don't know. I don't know how to do it yet. We'll figure it out. <sighs> Well, it's good to be back. I have to say I enjoyed this. I'm exhausted. I needed to be the weekend, which thankfully it is. Um, and I'll see you all next Friday. Um, stay tuned. Like, uh, If you subscribe and click the bell and all that nonsense, you'll get a notification when I schedule a live stream. Um, uh, but we'll see.
wheel that you can load a CSV to. So that would work. It doesn't have to be a JSON file. CSV would be fine. Um, but so we could have like a Google Sheet even that's just like keeping track of all this stuff. I hope people enjoyed this today. I don't know. I mean, I, it's good that I did this again. <laughs> we'll see if this can be edited into a coding challenge video. Why, I, that interface was horrifically bad for my ukulele tuner. I would like the chance to like not be live streaming and try to like try some of their ideas out. But somebody will make something really beautiful. You always do, internet. You always do. Follow Mango and Goose on Instagram. Those are my cats. <laughs> I don't do the Instagram, the cats do the Instagram. Ryan says, great stream, thanks. That's nice of you. Um, I actually don't have a way of, uh, I, don't, I don't have not set up local storage. That is a great suggestion. I'm gonna go over here and add that to the JavaScript topics. Local storage. I don't think this was the marker I was using because it's not the good one, but that's something that definitely should go on the list of things I want to accomplish this uh, f fall. Oh. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to go over here where I have uh, the YouTube streaming control room where I can um, shut down the stream. <laughs> uh, but first, I'm gonna go back to Open Broadcast Studio and I'm gonna click Stop Streaming. Bye everybody, I will see you next week or sooner or later or who knows, I really have no idea. <laughs> Goodbye.